This is Rule of Rose. It's pretty fun stuff. Tough game. Fun stuff, though. Here are the options. Contrast makes things brighter. Have it on eights. Noir filter makes things static. Have it low, or else it's going to look like a CRT television. It's terrible. Anyway, let's go. This game is an absolute pain to learn. I'll say that much. It's a fun game, but it is not an easy one. It is... Um, Easy to learn, tough to master. So actually, not even easy to learn. Easy to master, tough to learn. I feel like there's just sort of RNG hazards in the middle of the run that can kind of uh, throw you for a rope, so to speak. Hope you're doing good, by the way, Tally. Like, I, I had a run earlier that ended up dying. How did my first run go? Actually pretty good until I forgot what to do at the very end and then kind of experimented because I lost like five minutes. Most of the intros are going to be very straightforward for this game. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be heading over to the shed. You're doing good? That's good to hear. The shed has a key, and that key is going to be used. Also, this game moves very weirdly. I'm going to mention this. This game moves extremely weirdly. Meaning, on this hill especially, I hold up left on my D-pad. I don't push it on my uh, control stick. Because for some reason, even if you hold left on the control stick, the game will try to correct your movements a lot of the time. I don't know why. So you'll accidentally go through another loading screen. Therefore, killing your run already, which is bad. At the fork in the road coming up, you want to make a right. Because that's going to have the key we need. You can go to the left, but if you go to the left, all you'll learn is that you have to go to the right. But yeah, for anyone, though, like, you know, I kind of mentioned it earlier. This game is not a super easy game to, like, complete. The main issues about this game are the fact that Hoffman is probably one of the toughest bosses in the game. Um, the mermaid's not the worst. Like, a lot of people say, what about the mermaid? The mermaid's not as bad. Mainly because you have a lot more health. Like, the health in the mermaid fight is way more. The Hoffman fight, you have one, like, quarter heal and two, like, one-eighth heals. You barely have anything. Like, you're really starving for resources in the Hoffman fight. There's no way to get a lot more health that's speed run valuable. So, you're kind of SOL in the whole Hoffman section. As well, the mermaid is really easy to predict, and your weapon is normally going to be considered much, much stronger. While for Hoffman, he hits in a whole AoE area. It's really weird to mention, like, he has an AoE attack. Like, it's really strange. And it throws a lot of people off. Oh, super. The Prime Gaming. For 14 months. 14 months. Enjoy the emotes Can't and the scissors. And the lurk. Thank you. Hope you're Glad having a good day you today. Playing Rule of Rose. Hope, Hope you're doing you're well. well. So that's kind of the major issue that'll come later. Also, I mentioned it earlier, and I guess I can say in the footage I'm not using for the speedrun explain thing. Uh, what's the word? Hoffman is terrible. <laughs> He's absolutely awful. This game is one of those games that will... You just kind of have to hope things line up. I just want to mention when I did this game casually, by the way... Like, not even trying. I had one of the best Hoffman fights I've ever had. Literally, didn't have the limp. Didn't take a lot of damage. Brown was perfect. I think the main issue is that I got really unlucky on the positioning. Like, every time I tried to get Brown to attack him, he did the dive. And the dive is horrible to get. Um, the dive during that fight is just, hey, I'm invulnerable the entire time. Oh, I didn't hit you? That's okay. I'm invulnerable until I stand all the way up. But I'm also going to do an AoE. And if you're in that, you get hit. And then also, he attacks while you're on the ground. So it doesn't matter if you are about to get up. You don't get the same invulnerability because he times his attack. Like, he waits for your invulnerability to end because he has a slow attack. And it is the worst. Now, he can also miss the same slow attack. Usually, he won't. But he can. Anyway, if you're wondering why I haven't really talked much about the current section at hand, it's just running to this gate. Uh, this gate, you're going to be using the ticket. A lot of the early game is going to be very straightforward and railroaded. There's really not a lot to do. 
Um, doors are just going to kind of be in the way. You're going to need keys for them. Or sometimes you need keys. It's going to be a lot of you need to do one thing to kind of get the game rolling. Which you'll be able to see that as we continue. I kind of hope that this is going to work as a marathon commentary. I kind of want to keep my intro and just splice in my other introduction. And then splice in this one. And the whole run. So not only it doesn't change the run, it just changes me talking about it. Can I keep my intro from the last video and include it on this one? <laughs> that was a good intro, and it got ruined. And whenever I do these live, I feel really weird about saying the same intro twice. It's awkward. Anyway, chat, I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing better than my run was. Now that we're in the orphanage, by the way, like you learn the lay of the land much, much later. All you need to know right now is that the stairs are going to be important. The stairs. <laughs> I suppose, Wiseron, I suppose. I mean, Telly Hoffman's not doing an evil plan. This game's story is really convoluted and weird. Fun, but definitely weird. Hey, I stir up you doing good. Sounds like you are. That's good stuff. Like be uh, be like that, it do be like that. That's also one of the downside to making like the Maryland commentaries. I have a lot more bloopers than I should. Like, I've been getting really unlucky whenever I decide. Like, I feel confident, like, hey, we're gonna do these. And then like I did one for homecoming recently, and then it was like, oh, wait a minute. Here's a glitch that has never happened to you or anybody. Too bad. Anyway, we only go into this room because we need to get a story trigger. That is all you have to do. Just enter the room, and then you're good to go. Oof. Exactly. Well, I mean, a lot of speedrunning content in general is kind of... You don't see a lot of the work that goes into the finished product. Which is why Twitch kind of works really well for speedrunning. You get to see a lot of that. Although I do like making these marathon commentaries, they are quite fun. I just, I do like to stress the fact that they can be difficult. Anyway, for the actual strategy of what we're doing right now, we're following this boy. This boy is going to kind of lead us through the whole story and the chain of events that lead to the game. Uh, the early game is incredibly railroaded, so nothing too crazy here. Just do understand that this game does ramp up in difficulty by quite a lot. And for the most part, it plays a lot like other horror games. You know, Silent Hill, Resident Evil. Uh, except, imagine that, but the gameplay is a lot clunkier. I kind of liken this a lot more to, like, Clock Tower 3 or Rule of Rose. But even then, it's clunkier than those. Like, oh, sorry, uh, I said Rule of Rose. Fatal Frame. I mean Fatal Frame. There's one really annoying thing that this game does and Fatal Frame does, and it is called Camera Correction. I hate Camera Correction so much. The game will try to correct you on your movements, and it's such a pain. And yeah, I got motivated to run this game again because I didn't all the cutscenes run. Uh, but I'm starting to remember the downside of this. Mainly that mistakes in this game are a lot more punishing than other games. If I make a mistake in one game, I can just hit the reset button and I didn't lose that much time. In this game, if I make a mistake, I end up losing uh, hours of progress. Which, I guess it could be worse. Anyway, we give this kid the book and that's going to cause the funeral to occur. Uh, all this means is that we've caused the next story trigger, which is going to be at the bottom of the staircase. Oh, Fatal Frame's terrible with it, though. Because you need to turn very frequently, and sometimes it works, but god, Fatal Frame's like the worst game I've played with that camera correction. Like, Clock Tower 3 at least kind of will auto-adjust, like, to understand you're trying to go a certain direction. In this game and Fatal Frame, though, very often have that problem of, I want to go this way. Too bad? Also, I don't like the fact that you have to hold down a run button the whole time. Like, god, that is horrible. One of the upsides of this game is that, well, the default run is the max movement speed you'll go. She can't sprint any faster than this. So her movement speed is pretty much tied to this, which is quite nice, actually. Some games are kind of weird, too, because, like, they'll have walk-run, 
But the difference is you can actually swap walk, um, walk and run together. So like Silent Hill games, Resident Evil games, uh, Parasite Eve um, 2 I know has this. Um, a lot of horror games will have a thing where, oh, you can sprint and run. Well, hey, what do you want to be the default? So you only have to hold it for walking sometimes. I know Silent Hill 1 does this, Silent Hill 2 does this. Really all the Silent Hills do this, except for Homecoming Onward. I guess Shattered Memories Onward. Well, Juon is cursed, and that's a very different type of game. Anyway, now that we're down here, I mentioned we're going to the first floor. We just need to talk to the grave, and then we're done with the intro. The intro of the game is pretty much just move the correct way. There's not much going on here. And then we're good to go. Right, am I saving time, by the way? I might be. I am. Hooray! I'm in the positives for once. I'm not a negative man. Anyway, the speedrun strat here is just hold down a direction and wait. You're just gonna be hearing about good girls and bad girls. Do with this information what you will. All the answers are yes. It is slightly slower to pick now. So just pick yes. Well, if I ever play Kuo on a like it now. I don't plan, plan on playing Kuon just yet, because I don't feel like dropping hundreds of dollars. If anyone wants to mail me a copy of Kuon, I will speedrun it. That is my hardcore... That is my rule right there. I did this with the rule of Rose. How do you feel? Let's have a little chat. Anyway, now it's time to hear about good girls and bad girls. See? Good girl. So chat, what do you do to bad girls? They get punished, apparently, according to this game. You're a brave girl. Well, we have good, bad, brave, anyway, I'll be the one giving clever. Around here, okay? Depends. According to this game, they need to be punished. Girl. According to Ruler Rose. Now, yeah, Isain got me in this game. That's correct. First order. My main rule is if games get sent to my P.O. box, and, you know, I'm down to run them, I'm down to run them. So Rule of Rose is a good one here. Is there anything about this that you don't understand? Good, bad, brave, and clever. Hmm. Oh well. It doesn't really matter what you say. Is Kuan more expensive than Rule of Rose? North American, yes. Global, no. That's a weird thing, but... Yes I'll and no. Not fair? Well, what I mean by that is, if you want to buy North American copies, I think Kuan's like over a thousand at this point. A Rule of Rose is about 700 or so if you want the everything. Meanwhile, if you want to get like a Japanese copy, Rule of Rose is still like 300 bucks, while Kuan's like 100. Kuan's actually really cheap in Japanese, apparently. Also, the scariest part about this game is that the children are British. I said that last time, but I wanted them to bot, so I'm saying it again. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was just the EU version that saved a lot more time, not the Japanese version. British? They are British. They say limey. Or is it blimey or limey? I think it's blimey. Which one is it? It's vital speed or knowledge that we know. Is it blimey? Also, here's the end of Evangelion. Congratulations. Congratulations. Anyway, speed tech, go to the bucket. Is it? I thought it was blimey. How is it a slur against the British? No. I don't even know. Well, there we go. Anyway. Talk to the bucket man. You're mashing X. It's about two of these prompts and then leave. We're done with this room. We can leave now. Well, now we know. That's a funny one, Scooty. 
So a lot of this game is going to take place around this thing called the Aristocrats Club. We're about to make our way over there. It's always in the same spot. This game has a, you know, the map's always the same. It's pretty chill. Uh, we're going to be making our way there because a lot of the in-game events won't actually occur until you see it. Sometimes you can avoid this, and we'll be doing that later, but for the first game's event, you're going to have to go to the door and talk to it. This kind of gives you the tools in motion to get the things we need to start playing the game. Uh, Rule of Rose is actually a dog game, so it was, uh, you know, we don't have a dog right now. He's a part of the late, like, resources we need to get. We don't have anything much of all right now as we're playing in a survival horror game, so it's like, oh, what are you going to get? We need dog. So we're going to have to get all those resources by doing this early game mission. Also, there we go. Now we know. Also, I thought the dog game was that new game people were talking about. The airports for dogs. And then the airport for aliens run, ran by dogs. Isn't that the game people are playing these days? Anyway, we need these children to watch us. And then we leave. This teaches us that we need a butterfly. Did you see a butterfly? I already know where it is. It's gone. Oh. Well, that's depressing, then, in that case. I like lemons. I like lemon juice. Lemon juice is good, in fact. I think if this game were ever done in actual straight-up marathon settings, or, like, if you wanted just to beat the game, I would recommend making a series of safety saves. I can explain where. I'm not going to make them because... my hubris. But... I will kind of tell people where you can make safety saves if you're trying to practice this game or get good at it. Some chapters won't have any issues. It's really three main chapters, I feel like. And then there's one more at the final boss, but it's not nearly as bad. Anyway, hey, look, it's the butterfly. What does the butterfly mean? Also, that girl is sprinting for my butterfly. What this means is now... We can begin the game. Kind of. We're not going to get those resources just yet. We're still kind of learning the basics. But I get to make my dumb joke again. I love this joke. So, chat and everyone, you're going to see that there's going to be a dog. And he's tied up. You might say that he's hog-tied. I say... He's dog-tied. Anyway, we'll free him later. For right now, he'll remain dog-tied. He is stuck there until we have the resources to get him out. It is going to be a later game period. But it kind of shows the cruelty of these children. To dog-tie a dog like that. I'm glad you did the Prime Gaming for that one. I'm assuming you love the pun. And it's definitely not bad. Now you were the 33 months. I'm assuming you love the pun. Definitely nothing else, right? Yep, alright, I'm glad. And we have a channel founder doing that. Not just anyone, it's a channel founder. That dog's in hot water. Well, no, he's not. Anyway, we're going to the guest room hall. Here, we're going to get our first weapon of the game. And we're going to see a sad girl. We're going to approach her. Casually approach the child. We want her butterfly. In order to get it, we need to steal her weapon. It's not really much of a steal. She kind of just tells us, go die. You deserve to be gobbled up. Or has to be gobbled up. You need to take the fork to get the butterfly. And we need the butterfly for progress. We don't care about this fork. We only need it for the sake of getting resources. Nothing else matters, like the Metallica song. You know the one. Enter Sandman. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, now we have the butterfly. We can go all the way back. All the way back. You can't use the fork to chop down Brown. That is the name of the dog. He doesn't have a name yet, but we'll give him a name. His name is Brown. For now, he will remain dog-tied. But it's just going to be a nice way back. You'll kind of learn the lay of the land a little bit. You'll kind of see, oh, here's beds. You'll kind of see the generator in the center sort of deal. 
Um, learning these layouts is going to be really important. Turbine, that's the word I'm looking for. Not generator, it's a turbine. I'm not really that keen on the build of an airship, because I've never really been on an airship. I've been on a plane, but I didn't go on a plane until I was like 20. So, food for thought. I'm not really too familiar with the world of wind turbines. Or air turbines, I should say. And now we're going to make our way back. Also, we're going to get introduced to the first enemy of the game after about 20 minutes. <laughs> this is an imp. The imps will impede your progress. They're the kind of the main cannon fodder enemies. They have ugly faces. Alright, here's what we're going to do. It's pro strat. Avoid him. We won the fight. Yay! You get nothing for fighting them. If you don't need to fight them, do not fight them. They're not needed for fighting. They're really annoying. All they'll do is impede your progress. That is it. The only times you'll have to fight them are as if you see a door slam in the beginning of entering a room. In that case, you know that the door will be locked for exiting, and you're going to be forced into a fight. I have an idea. <laughs> Let's leave. Pretty much. We just immediately leave. And then there's nothing he can do about it. You see, he is a small child. We have a long gait. We have long legs. You know what long legs means? I mean, it means we can beat the child in a foot race. Which is good for us. Bad for the child. The child. Oh, I was supposed to split again. I keep forgetting to split here. I've been saving time. It's fine. Anyway, the butterfly we got, all it does is it lets them make fun of me. You know, I, I do that a lot. It's an excuse. But this excuse ends up giving me a cutscene. And this cutscene is going to let me get a key that lets me get in the rat race of events that's going to allow us to beat the level. That's <laughs> Norton. So now we have that item. What was the dessert for it? Do you have a dessert knife? Also, now that we have this key, we can make progress. Technically, all you would need is these keys and brown, but currently there's no way to get the items we need early, and that is a tad bit unfortunate. It's okay, but it is, you know, a wee, a wee bit unfortunate. Also, this nerd's gonna hand us a book. We don't like reading, so we're gonna immediately finish it. You ever just thumb through a book and immediately throw it away? That's what we're doing here. Same principle. See? Nice and easy. We're gonna tell him his book sucks and then he'll cry and run away. At this point, we're now free to go. Really a harsh critique, but sometimes you have to be, you know, tough but fair. It's kinda like me when I, uh, you know, when I read the comments on YouTube videos. I kind of just skim through them, and then I, get, I respond or I don't respond. Well, actually, the YouTube crowd's mostly nice. It just sometimes people get kind of weird about it. <laughs> I've had some really strange insults, and I don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> but it's I. Anyway, now that that kid's gone, we can enter this room. This room is going to have the ability for us to free our dog, Brown. Uh, you don't want to talk to the eye. Talk to the button. The button will lower the scissors. Talking to the eye will lose you time. And that is bad. See? Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like she could have ran, like... I feel like she could, if she jumped, she probably could have reached those scissors. I kind of see sad whenever there's puzzles like this where, you know, the answer would very easily just be jump. Slight lift. But I guess it's not always fair, is it? Anyway, now that we have the scissors, we can get them. And we can save the dog from being dog-tied. I swear to God, if I end up dying in the Sir Peter again, I'm gonna cry. If I die again on Sir Peter, that means 
I'm just not gonna try making a video for this one yet. I'll just do a casual, or not casual, I'll just do a regular speed run of this. I think we'll be fine though. I, I've got the jitters out. You know how it's like you do a shot for doing another shot to get the jitters out? It's kinda like that. The same deal. Also, I guess more of a casual life thing as opposed to getting rid of the speedrun thing. Because right now all we're doing is we're going to be talking to Brown. We're going to be freeing him. Actually, you know what? Before I get into that, I guess there is tech to talk about here. So with Brown, we're going to go up to him. Casually approach the dog. At this point, I'm actually going to be using the menu here. I'm immediately just going to go to my menu. I'm going to get rid of the books. I don't need the books. I'm going to be dropping them. Uh, this is going to open up inventory for later, and that's going to be very good. I don't need to worry about a lot of my inventory right now. Uh, at a certain point, I'll have to empty my inventory again. But for right now, that's going to be pretty nice for me. I also want to give this dog a collar. I'm also going to get rid of the fork. I don't need it. We don't need weapons. No weapon. It's like that Dino Crisis speedrun category. Anyway, we give Brown the necklace. Or the collar, I guess, is the appropriate turn of phrase. And now he is our friend. He is no longer dog-tied. Now he's free. Brown. So Brown's mechanic here, uh, the game will give you a tutorial to teach you how Brown works. We don't really care about the tutorial at all. Uh, if you are playing safe, though, you can actually use the tutorial to give you some health. It gives you, like, two biscuits. Uh, we don't want to do that. We shouldn't have too many issues with this section. So we're just going to go to the door and hit no. That ends the section, and then we're good to go. Brown is a good boy. So the way Brown functions, if you push circle, he will go. Like he'll, you know, it's like, come. He'll follow you. If you push square, he will stay. If you push triangle, you will tell him to go or go. You know, if you're not saying, like, Jennifer. Now, what go does is, one, if he has an item equipped, he'll go after the scent of said item. Meaning that can help you find progress or bonus items. Two, if he doesn't have an item and there's enemies, he'll attack the enemies. Otherwise, it's just funny to hear goo, which is, you know, hilarious. Now we're going to be beginning the mission for a bunch of keys and kind of entering the tutorial of Brown in action. Brown's a good dog. But he's also a glorified metal detector, as you'll see. Uh, I actually don't even really need Brown near me to do half the things I want him to do. You'll kind of notice it right now when I'm going into the guest room again. So we're going to be grabbing this thing off the chair. It is a copper leaf. Uh, this is going to allow me to find a key. Uh, I'm going to equip this on brown while I talk to this door. Because this door is locked and I actually do need to open it. So first things first, I'm going to equip the leaf. That will let brown find things. And then I'll just unlock the door. This is a tactic called just, you know, I guess menu. I don't really know. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Advanced menuing, I suppose, could be a good one, or efficient menuing. Also, I just say go here. Hey, look, the item spawned in. By telling Brown to go, the items immediately spawn in. I don't even need Brown to find them. He'll just find them for me. It's quite nice. So we just go, and then Brown immediately will find the item. So I don't actually need brown, I just need his nose, and then like the item will will itself into existence. So the advanced menuing tactic I'm talking about, though, is the idea that with using efficient menuing, instead of, you know, picking up the copper leaf, equipping it to brown, going back into the menu again, and like, for example, this hat. I picked up the hat, but, I mean, I don't need to use it right now. I don't have a need, because I don't need to use it until I get to a room. But, if I use it when I get on this door, I already need to be in the menu to unlock the door. So, it's efficient menuing, essentially. There is no great knife in this game. Tell of the worst weapons the dessert fork. Unless you mean, like, a meme weapon. This game does actually have a lot of meme weapons that aren't really busted. All the meme weapons are actually really good, so it wouldn't be worth it. But yeah, the efficient menuing is a really good thing. Not only in Rule of Rose, but many horror games. It's a nice tactic to use, so I recommend it. Anyway, brown going. We can now get the rag. And like I mentioned, all we care about for Brown is that he will will items into existence for us. And right now, we're actually going to be equipping the dirty rag. And let's get rid of the other ones. <laughs> I 
There we go. Very jealous of my Freddy Krueger mouse pad. My brother got it for me. It's a nice mice mouse pad. I've been using it for since Christmas. It's a nice one. I have another mouse pad. I don't use that one as much just because I do like the one my brother got me. But sometimes I swap between the two. Mainly if I'm doing a lot of hardcore gaming. <laughs> so it really depends. Anyway, going back to the logic that Brown is a glorified metal detector. If you're playing this game casually and you're wondering, where do I go? Just equip an item that you get and tell Brown to follow it. Brown will genuinely lead you the way you need to go. However, Brown's inefficient, so he's going to give you weird paths. You may notice I'm not telling Brown where to go, because if I tell Brown where to go, he'll lead me all the way around the mountain. I don't want to go all the way around the mountain. I want to go through the mountain. It's faster. By going into the smoking room, we get speed. See, I wanted to make a joke about smoking stogies, but I already made that joke, so it feels weird me repeating it twice. I don't really smoke that often, I suppose. But either way, the principle's still there. The smoking room is going to be faster because it allows you to cut through. All we need for the rag is Brown to go here. This time we actually do need to wait for Brown because um, Jennifer won't rip off the thing. Only Brown can do it. I guess she's not powerful enough. Anyway, with that, we end up getting the keep. And now we can make our way to the next section. We no longer need to worry about Brown just yet. And then we'll be going back through the smoking room. This is why it's pretty important to kind of learn the lay of the land. Because even though Brown can tell you where to go, you're going to be saving a lot of time if you know the efficient routing on which to take. Because it's not always going to be, oh, follow Brown to a T. Because sometimes he'll try to go as, you know, the AI think is efficient. But the AI doesn't realize that, oh, it's actually faster to do this. So it's kind of weird. Anyway, that being said, now we can go in here and, uh... Uh, there it is. We are almost good to go. The next one's gonna be kind of weird, um, and it's gonna be kind of a nice bypass of the game's mechanics. A lot of the stuff in the game kind of requires brown, as you can see. Like, oh, the, the, some of the keys didn't even, like, the rag didn't even spawn in until you talked to brown, right? Like, you need brown. He's important, right? Not quite. Sometimes brown's important. Other times he's not. And this is going to be one of those times where you just kind of need brown to be in the area. So there's a butterfly that's currently spawned in this area. Not yet, but it's technically in the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter this room and talk to Amanda. Amanda's the, the young girl out there with her butterfly case. We want to talk to her once, and then she's just going to growl at us. We're immediately going to leave, because I'm not going to lie to you. Have you ever talked to someone and they growl to you? In most cases, I'm going to recommend maybe you don't talk to that person. It doesn't end well for you. Be careful with people growling at you. I'm just going to say that. Anyway, now that Amanda is out of the room, what's going to happen is I'm going to go back into that room. And we're actually going to take that butterfly case. Normally, if you're lost and you don't know what to do, you're going to give Brown the butterfly case to sniff. And having this butterfly case is going to allow you to find the butterfly. However, the thing is, I know where the butterfly is. And the existence of the butterfly case spawns in the butterfly. Meaning you don't actually need Brown to do anything with it. You just kind of need the idea that, oh, Brown could find the butterfly. I'm not sure why the game selectively spawns like this, but if you just run back here. There it is. And then the butterfly chase isn't hard. You see, like, even Brown's barking at it like, oh, I did all the work. Brown didn't do a thing. I knew where it was. It was all me. Brown just wills items into existence. So, the butterfly chase isn't hard. You see a butterfly? Follow it. Trust me. It'll work every time. This is always uh, scripted. It's gonna go left. This always happens. There we go. Don't mind any time lost down here. Uh, I'm not sure where I was supposed to be going originally on this. 
so my splits are a little bit wonky. Anyway, the chase always ends right here. So, this is about to be very important to this section. Immediately start mashing the pickup button. You need the butterfly. Now, what did I say about fights? Ignore them. They don't matter. I don't have a weapon. I threw it out. So, these kids with brooms can suck it. I'm leaving. Good fight. Remember, unless a door gets slammed on you or locked, you don't need to worry. You can escape almost every fight. So now that the imps are in full force, uh, we're mainly going to want to try to avoid them. Uh, the primary thing to keep an eye out for is if they're kind of moving, I suppose is the key word for that one. You'll notice the imps can move in different patterns and they'll try to block your path. You just kind of want to keep moving in as straight a path as you possibly can. Like, right now, this imp actually was polite, and then he bumped into me. I had to correct my pathing. It's slightly RNG on how the imps work. It's nothing too crazy. Just keep this in mind. Also, enjoy the music. You don't need to take any of these fights. It's only a waste of time and or resources. Was the imp polite? The first one was, the second one was not. This guy just was really eager. That guy's fine. Normally, you want imps like that, where, like, after you pass them, like, Wait a minute! I had to attack! And then they, like, late attack. It's kind of like lag in fighting games. You know when someone's like really far away and you finally land the hit you wanted to, but you realize that that move you inputted 20 seconds ago? That's what the imps are kind of like. Good pathing. And now we have the broom dudes. That broom dude was kind of rude, not the end of the world. So cool thing about taking hits, I took damage. Is that bad? Yes and no. The damage is bad because that's slightly stunned. However, each chapter will refill your health. So once I get to the next chapter, I will spawn in with 100% of my health. I don't lose anything. So getting hit really is just a minor annoyance. Uh, however, keep in mind, if you are in one chapter and you need health, that gets bad. So for this chapter, it's not bad I got hit. It's just a minor time loss. But it is something to be noted that you do want to be careful of the AoE of enemies. It is a lot larger than you imagine. The enemies in this game are like that Pee Wee Herman character, Large Marge. Why? Because the word large is in there. No other reason, just the word large. I know that has nothing to do with this, but I like Large Marge and the phrasing on that. By the way, I said earlier I had like a life thing I wanted to mention. All that is, is up, since we're like just mashing buttons and skipping a cutscene, uh, I found out I'm able to walk around more. I've actually been walking a lot. Um, I used to walk 3,000 steps a day. I actually did 5,000 yesterday. However, I found a really weird conduit for this. By drinking more, I walk more. Because I drink slow, so I just drink downstairs while walking in circles and I managed to do 5,000 steps. I don't know if this is good or bad. I figured I'm drinking anyway, so it's probably good. <laughs> but it's, I mean, you know, probably better if I didn't. But it's a nice way to ease on into it, not gonna lie to you. Was, oh, I already answered that question. So, yes. Fun fact on that one, I suppose. I guess whatever makes it work, eh, nah? Whatever makes it work. Don't mind this time loss. It is okay. All right, now we're on Sir Peter. I made another one of these earlier where I talked for an hour and had absolute golden commentary. And then you know what happened? I got a dick in my mouth. Why? Sir Peter. So, Sir Peter, casually, and as a speedrun, is probably the hardest chapter in the game. It's weird, because, like, oh, wait a minute, this is, like, the first boss. How is it hard? The amount of resources and strong weapons you get will kind of dictate how well you're doing. You don't get a lot of health, you don't have a lot of resources, and you're rather weak in the early game. Once you get to the late game, like, especially if you've been playing well, you will have a lot of chances for health and other things. I think in total in this game, there are probably two risky chapters and two annoying chapters. Like, a lot of people when they talk about this game casually, usually the thing that comes up is, wait, what about the mermaid pr princess? What, but isn't she hard, the mermaid? Like, the mermaid princess, man. No, the mermaid princess is actually really easy. I mean, it might be because I'm used to that. I mean, I always grew up in, like, when I was a boy, I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm, I, live in, I live in the U.S. I'm half Mexican. I grew up with piñatas. Piñatas are nothing new to me. They're fun. I like piñatas. Um, maybe I have a bias on that one. But the thing is, this coming boss is a pain in the ass. Also, Splinter with a tier 1 for 25 months. Hope you're doing well, my man. It's great to see you. How you been? Thank you very much. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and thank you. You should do 20k. See, that sounds like the right idea. 
I want to get to 10k. I think it's my goal. I want to get to, I want to get to the 10k steps. 5k is already more than I've been doing, so I feel good on 5k. Yeah, things are going good. My wrist hurts a little bit, but outside of that, I can't complain too much. I'm doing some nice commentary for this game because it costs a lot of money and people don't get to see this game very often, so it's fun. Anyway, going back to the general gist of things, the mermaid generally gives you more resources and the fight's a lot more predictable in my opinion. Um, the coming up boss fight, uh, once we kind of get to the end of this chapter, is going to be much, much tougher. Just take my word for that. Um, I'll kind of give the general tip, but keep that in mind. Anyway, we need to make our way over to the lift. Uh, all that note says is, hey, meet me on the top of the air shift. So you need to look for an elevator, because that makes sense. This chapter as well is going to start introducing the concept of combat. Now, I know some of you may have been watching this for a little bit wondering, hey, wait a minute. Where's the tech in the speed run? How can you call this a speed run? Well... A lot of the tech's gonna be a little more subtle. As well, a lot of the tech in this game's gonna be exploiting wonky combat. Sounds good, my man. Sounds good. Enjoy the lurk. And uh, let me know when you're back in town, by the way. Let me know. Do let me know that one. I'm curious. I'm able to go outside once again. It's nice. So do let me know. Alright, I just DM me on that one. Yeah, same. Same. More of a brisk walk. Well, I mean, can you call uh, Jennifer's movement speed running? I call it running. She's trying her best. She runs like I used to do in high school. You know, I put, I put effort into running in high school. She kind of runs like she's just trying to get a C in PE in gym. Or in high school. That's how she's running. She wants to get to that bare minimum. The 20-minute uh, the mile. The power walk, that's what's up. Hey, just remember though, based on mile speeds, all that matters is that you're doing a mile. I don't ever dog people on their athletic ability. You know why? I can only I, I can only run a mile in twenty minutes. That's not bad. You ran a mile. I mean, obviously, you know, the better you get over time will be more rewarding, but doing a mile in twenty minutes is a lot more impressive than not doing a mile. Think about that. Doing something will be better than not doing something. I know that sounds like a smart-ass comment, but I guess this is a nice way to uplift anyone who's getting into working out or anything, playing music, playing video games, speedrunning, any hobby whatsoever. Doing something will give you more street cred than not doing something. I can only bench the bar for bench press. You know what, though? How many did you do? You bench the bar? Hey, that's more than other people do. Good job, homie. Proud of you. I'm proud of you, Chad. And I'm proud of potential YouTube watchers. Good job. Better than not benching the bar, and if you can't bench the bar, you'll get there. Don't worry about it. That's all about personal growth. It's a very important thing. You don't need to compare yourself to, you know, the, Her the Herculean feats. As long as you're doing better than yourself, you're fine. And even then... Even if you're not doing better than yourself, you can get back on that horse. You gotta keep moving, though. That's the important part. You gotta keep moving. I lost a run this earlier. A lot of chat saw me a bit. Like, I was slightly sad, but you know what? I'm back 43 minutes into commenting this one. Who knows? Maybe this one dies again. And you know what will happen after that? I'm gonna get back on that horse. I never mind it. The number one thing you can have in life. Tenacity. Tenacity is the strongest trait anyone can have the ability to endure anyway back to the game for a moment we're going to the piggy shack we met up with her and now she's wondering hey what are we doing so we have to kind of get these uh triggers all set up and done in order to get this we need to talk to her by the way her name's actually amanda if you're wondering why she's called piggy she's supposed to be kind of like piggy from lord of the flies which is really sad. I actually really like Amanda as a character. She's a really tragic character. I learned recently as well that apparently the name Amanda means to be worthy of love. And Amanda and Rule of Rose is the exact opposite. Apparently they didn't intend that, which is wild to me. Because that, I mean, that's that's good writing right there. Yeah, that is very ironic writing. That is the, the, the definition of irony. Anyway, 
we're about to get our mission now. You've been wondering, um, hey, wait a minute. Don't 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 each of these days have missions with the aristocrats? Well, they're telling me to go to the box. Amanda's a fool, so she's gonna go to the box. Chat, you're smarter than Amanda is, though. You know what we're gonna do? We're not gonna go to the box. Talking to the note caused the event to happen. So, Sir Peter the Rabbit has spawned in now. Uh, going to the box informs you that Peter is around. However, once you read the note, you can begin the rabbit chase. This is a very minor skip. Technically, it's not so much a skip, it's more just kind of using the intended mechanic. I think you're intelligent, chat. At least more so than Amanda. Amanda went the entire wrong way. It's like rain on your wedding day, exactly. Sorry, it's like rain, rain, is that how it is? It's like rain, like that. And who would have thought it figures? Anyway, the chase actually begins in this room, the rabbit hunt. We're gonna have a few things to do here. First things first, we are going to take the rabbit droppings. Next, we're going to be taking the book in the background. Now, you're wondering, why are you taking these droppings? That's disgusting. How's it going, sister? Hope you're having a good day today. Also, with, like all books, we're going to immediately ignore them. The reason why I dropped things earlier is because I just want to chase after the rabbit. There you go. Chasing the rabbit is going to be the smart thing here. The rabbit's going to be on rails, but not the way you think. So, I say it is on rails, but for one, the rabbit's really fast. Also, enemies are spawning in. Make sure you avoid them. You want to make sure you follow the rabbit exactly. You can be slow here, so it's not exactly an auto-scroller. But what you need to consider is that the rabbit is going to be stopping by certain areas. And while the ultimate area we're going to go in is actually the cargo hold, that's not going to matter because the rabbit's going to have his own areas. Sir Peter will have his own stops. And a rail bit, you know, that's actually kind of correct. The rail bits. You'll see Sir Peter runs away. You want to make sure you chase Sir Peter every moment. So I actually don't even care about this room. I just care about Sir Peter. Cute dog? Correct. Make Jennifer a greyhound? Technically. You may actually even notice I need to go in that door anyway, but I need Sir Peter to go the way he does. You care about that room? Well, hey, there you go. And then lastly, we're actually going to be getting a weapon. This weapon's going to uh, come in handy because we're going to be getting into our first forced fight in the game. After about 50 minutes, we're finally going to be getting a fight. I can't believe it, chat. So, we're going to get the knife. And then, we are going to be causing the rabbit to spawn. You may have noticed the rabbit ran behind me. That's okay. I don't care about the rabbit right now. Because, if I try going to the door the rabbit entered, you'll notice it's locked and you can't enter it. That's okay, it's not a oh, I, by the way, I just forgot to split, that's fine. That's okay, it's not the end of the world. All that's going to actually matter is one, you need to take the health. It's very important to take this health. Two, I'm, before I pick up this one, I'm actually going to take a moment, because there's health back here, it's a mince pie. I'm going to be equipping the knife, and I'm actually going to be getting rid of a lot of resources. Get rid of the letter. Oh, pfft, I messed that up. How's it going, Xable? And yeah, Blaze Blunt, I have an actual copy of this game. I'm mean, getting rid of all the top row of stuff. I need to open my inventory. It's very important. And I'm actually going to equip the droppings. Like I mentioned, I didn't want to equip the droppings just yet, but I did want to equip them. Uh, the reason why is because um, when I get to the bathroom, it's going to be RNG on where the rabbit spawns. But before that, you notice I equip the knife. Here is our first fight. Also, I hope that you're okay, Xable. Have plenty of Tylenol, water, and make sure you're nice and healthy. Well, it's not plenty, a, a healthy amount of medicine and you know, stuff like that. First fight of the game. You may notice the door is locked. What you want to do, you just tap X. Hearing a scream means that you did get an enemy dead. Like so. Avoid the AoE attack. That's the strategy right there. Just stab, stab, stab. If you mash the button, what will end up happening is you will constantly be comboing. The combo is slow, and it's about equal damage. 
It's okay, though, Xay. We'll have plenty of water and get some rest. That should help. We don't need to fight this dude. How did I get Roll Rose? It was sent to me. I was going dinky. We're finally in the bathroom. So this is going to be good for us. You can kind of see how the fights work. You just kind of push the one button and you don't do the full combo. You do part of the combo. Also, there we go. This is randomized, by the way. Every time I've done this recently, he does spawn in this door, but I, I know for a fact I have had him spawn in other doors. Also, there we go. So it is a bit randomized on that one. And now, we're actually going to be beginning part two of this. We have one more spot to find the rabbit, and then we're going to be getting our next uh, inventory difference. How though, I do want to mention... Uh, how though? Although, I also want to mention, if you are doing this either a speedrun practice or even casually... The moment you get the luggage, so luggage bunny, as you see my splits, you want to save the game. It's very important you save the game coming up if you're doing this either for marathon safety or if you're doing this for just your own casual playthrough. This kind of works for both. Um, the hardest boss in the game is about to happen. You may notice this is BDSM fight. Uh, that is going to be uh, the fight with a guy named Hoffman. Uh, it's a very tough fight. And the reason why it's one of the toughest is, as you notice, I have three health items. Uh, I'm pretty weak right now. Normally, I recommend saving after the luggage because we get a weapon in there, and that's how you kind of lead to yourself to the boss fight. Uh, you can save in your own the filth room, your own personal bedroom. So, food for thought. Also, we still want Brown to have the droppings. Uh, I still have that equipped because Brown will find the 1 in 3 RNG. Ideally, you want the top or the middle. The bottom is the worst. Of course, I got the bottom. Now that we have that, we can pick up this, and we're going to begin the next phase. So, before I leave the room, what I actually want to do is I want to equip the pipe. And I want to get, I want to remove the droppings entirely and get rid of them. I don't need them anymore. I know where I'm going. Also, I can get rid of the knife. So the reason why you want to unequip the droppings is because... I want to drop them. Ha <laughs> ha! Shaky. The reason why I want to remove the droppings is because Brown can only attack if he has an empty find slot. If it is filled with anything, he will go after the find. Like, he will try finding that. Otherwise, you're all good. And maybe. I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if I have any games for it. Also, the moment 2016 does suck, and you have good taste. We're gonna... Oh, that was close. Luckily, hey, it was pretty fun there. Alright, so this fight's about to begin. Hopefully you saved, or if you're on an emulator, you can use save states. This fight. Now, why is this fight so hard? Why, why is this fight so hard, Ictisus? Well, the reason why it's hard is, for one, this enemy hits like a truck. Two, he has AoE and he has infinite combos. First things first, I chat Brown, go after him. Brown did very good. That was a very good one by Brown. That's fine. You can kind of see the AoE. Also, Brown is being weird. It did suck. You can see the problem with infinite combos. Alright, good. The general idea is you want to make sure that you start limping immediately heal. Well, hold on. Another thing to consider, if you see it like this kind of thing, where you're partially on the ground and he's kind of there as well, keep an eye on that. It's very important that you do not fall under too low on health. He can infinite you. Normally it's about two hits and then he'll go for the AoE swing. Final health. You may notice I'm pausing a lot. Keep your distance. There we go. You can also no oh, hold on. There we go. How a feeling? This fight is incredibly tough. 
fine. Alright, I'm gonna be limping for the finale, but he should be dead after this. Good fight. Oh my god. Okay, that was close. That was really close. That was really close. Um, so good news and bad news. I lose time because of this. That's fine. Bad news. I ended on low health, so I'll be limping for the rest of the section. There's no more enemies. You're all safe. Um, you can kind of see how difficult this fight can really be. Um, all I can really say is keep an eye out for the overhead swing. Um, ideally, you don't want to match buttons getting up. I think it can help you get up faster. You don't want to get up faster. Um, you want to avoid those swings. And you really want to make sure that Brown can get the maximum number of hits in. Like, once Brown has them, you need to be wailing. You can get a lot of hits on that. As you, The first one I had was really good. The second two, Brown kind of got iffy. The problem with that section is Brown can actually get a bit lost. Um, he can kind of get infinitely walking into the wall. In order to cancel that, you just tell him to stay, and then you tell him to go once again. He'll usually correct himself. Um, ideally, you want to end the fight on even basic health. If you have at least a quarter, you should be able to walk faster. You save a lot of time. You notice I may be losing time. This is okay. Um, you can still get a good time even if this happens. It's not the end of the world. You might not be able to get world record, but you can get a good time. And that's the important part. As well, if you do better on the fight, you can have more health for later. Um, it's really kind of RNG. Um, you noticed a little bit near the end of that fight, I was able to just wail on him consistently. I got really lucky. Uh, I don't really know what causes it. Sometimes good positioning, sometimes he just bugs out. Uh, it's a variety of things that really vary. That was going to be Jessica. Hope you're doing good today. So it's a lot of food for thought on that one. Anyway, to end the chapter, you're going to be giving Amanda the rabbit you picked up. Make sure you picked up the rabbit. If you didn't and you're limping, God may, may have may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, you are going to have to have a horrible time going all the way back. You get a milestone. Nice. What's the milestone? Oh, it was nice and good. And anyway, that was the Sir Peter level. And once you make it that door, you're all good to go. And like I mentioned, we get a full heal. So this um, impairment will only carry forward for this level. You're not going to have issues with the rest of it. Uh, however, how you play the next three levels is actually going to vary. Um, it's pretty neat. I actually like the mechanic that the game gives you. Hey, big congratulations to that. Big congrats. You've been doing pretty good. Pretty good stuff. You may notice I'm losing time. That's because I did not have the ability to sprint. My fight itself was okay, but I ate a lot of damage. So I had to do the slow crawl back. That's okay. Remember, a completed run will always beat an uncompleted run. In total, you lose about 30 seconds from damage. All right, so fun fact, you get to pick the order of the next three. What I recommend to prevent resets, or to know if you're resetting more often, do Mermaid Princess first. I know what you're thinking, bird, the bird is probably faster, isn't it? Like, the bird's nice. There's no actual mattering on the order that you do. And no matter how you pick it, it will usually be the same. However, depending on your order, you either want Mermaid or Bird of Happiness first. One of those two. I recommend Mermaid, because if you kill your run, you'll know sooner. It's better to kill your run on Mermaid Princess because you failed than it is to do the bird and then fail on Mermaid. So doing Mermaid after Sir Peter is imperative in my opinion. Bird is the word. We do Bird second. Now, what you're thinking, wait, wait, what, isn't there a third option? What about the goat? We don't care about the goat yet. So the intended order for you to do this normally in the way the game designers made it was you went one, two, three. I mean, left to right makes a lot of sense. That's sequential ordering. That's fine. Um, but the thing about that is with the way this game upgrades your weapons, it puts the strongest weapon that you can have during this chapter on Mermaid Princess. So by starting in the Mermaid Princess, you're going to have a beefy weapon that you would have to get anyway. Or that you can get anyway, I should say. <sighs> this is safer and overall better for the mermaid fight as well. And then you'll be able to carry this over to the goat section. 
in theory, if you did Goat Sisters first, there would be slightly less movement, but I think the mermaid fight would be slower as a whole. How's it going, Hudson? Hope you're doing good. Before you begin this chapter, grab the shortbread in the corner. You need health, and a lot of it. Luckily, this chapter is going to give you a lot better health. Uh, it's going to give you a shortbread and a couple of lollipops. You see, the difference is, while, oh, wait, you said, you said this was easier. How is this easier? All right, biscuits heal you like that. Lollipops heal you like this. You get two lollipops. Last time we had two biscuits. Biscuits are terrible. Funny enough, we don't like we actually don't even need to go to the door anymore. Uh, our goal is going to be getting a mermaid. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you don't need to do, and it's kind of funny. You know, it actually would be nice to kind of test how strong the uh, the other weapon is. Because your options are either an ice pick or a meat cleaver. I'm actually kind of thinking of the ice pick would be equal in damage. But to my knowledge, the meat cleaver is a significant upgrade from uh, the ice pick. And then it really doesn't matter afterward because we get another weapon. But technically you would save a bit of time on movement. So hard to say. The game is kind of weird on its weapon upgrades. How the run's been tonight? My first run was okay, but then I got lost. The second run, I tried Marathon Commentary, and I uh, I choked. And now uh, I'm doing another Marathon Commentary, and this one's going better because I actually beat that. Anyway, we need to talk to those girls. After that, we're going to be able to go begin our mission. Uh, the way this is going to be going is... Lost at the end? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I lost on the, uh, the guy I just fought. <laughs> Also, once again, we're having a lot more candy. Look at that. Resources. A lot more resources. This trail's a lot better. We're going back to the lift. Um, the path we're actually taking is going to be very self-explanatory. We're going to be sticking to the left. Oof. Sky candy versus ocean candy. You know, I guess that's fair. By this point in the game, you probably know a lot of these areas rather well because you've been running through them the whole time. Hey, look at this room. You'll learn to hate this room. It's pretty awful. Like, the Hoffman fight is probably one of the hardest fights I've ever played in a video game. I would actually love to watch more people try the Hoffman fight and see how they do. He's the Dark Souls of horror game fights. Anyway, we want to go to the left, and then this way is going to allow us to kind of get the cutscenes we need to progress forward. As well, it's going to be getting a nice, uh, nice and a lot more aquatic. So I kind of like this whole section. He's clunky and awful? Oh, absolutely. The next boss fight is going to be a bit weird, because again, a lot of you are like, Oh, isn't this the tough one? Yes and no. It's tough if you don't know how to fight it. If you know how to fight it, it's really easy, I think. Also, damn, 222 months. Thank you very much. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors. And yeah, it's been good so far. I think now that we have it going forward, we should be fine with the whole game. As long as I don't do too badly on the rag princess. Alright, now you can notice things are getting a bit more blue. We needed that cutscene with Clara and uh, Hoffman. Also, you may notice, wait, Hoffman, didn't that guy just die? Yes. But don't worry, he'll be okay. So now that we have that, we can go down here. This is where the meat cleaver is going to be. All the way down. By the way, there's like a lot, if you get lost, there's a lot of things like fish here that you can use to detect, and you'll naturally be led this way. Um, you can also pick up that fish and then keep finding, but if you're doing this as a speed run, you really don't need to worry about that. You'll be more than fine. Uh, the next section as well is a bit of an RNG hellhole, but luckily for us, like I mentioned, we have plenty of health. So we're going to be A-okay. Also, we're going to get plenty more health. We're going to be going to the left. Now, why do you want to go left instead of right? Well, speed-wise, there's actually no real difference. Left and right are about the same. However, the left side has candy. Brown does want that fish. I hope having a good day today, Dan. So you want the candy, because the candy heals you a lot. Or the lollipops do, I should say. They're very beefy. 
So there's one. And there's two. And then once you get this one, you actually want to go back up the stairs. And then you follow her. Nice. Beefy candy. It heals a lot. Indeed. It heals quite a lot. Alright, here's Fish Hell. I call it Fish Hell because this is the, one of the worst hallways in the game. It is absolutely horrible. Why is it so bad? You'll see. Um, I would argue it's the hardest hallway in the game. Not the hardest boss. It's definitely easier than Hoffman, but if you're unlucky, God, it's going to make the mermaid fight so bad. So you need to go to the right because the bridge is out. You don't need to pick that up. That's like a fish head or something like that. You don't need it. That's the important part. Um, when you can take a left, you're going to take a left. And then we enter fish hell. Here it is. Fish hell. I usually like to cut on the right. I got lucky. You can pick your path. Really think what you want to do. It is A-OK. -okay. And that is fish hell. And now we're going to begin the mermaid fight. You may notice my split says it's whack-a-mole, or like a pinata, kind of. I mentioned earlier the, you know, the metaphor of pinatas. It's really easy if you expect what to happen. So, the way the fight's going to work, I'm going to break it down really quickly for you. First things first, enter the door. Once we get back into the game. Game. There we go. Enter the door. The fight will begin once you move towards the bed. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip... Why is this... Alright, there we go. We're just going to equip the knife right now. I picked up the meat cleaver. Now I can use it. Also, I'm going to get rid of these. I don't need them anymore. And now you can begin the fight. This fight's going to be tough. Tell Brown immediately to stay. You do not want Brown moving. She's going to go up pretty quickly. She pukes. Get out of the puke. Kind of run around in circles. Pay attention where she drops. And then just go for the stabbing combo. You need about 30 stabs. You do not want to get dropped on. You do not want to be in puke. Keep an eye out. You can get a lot of hits in. She will go up. Do not get punched. Do not get puked on. Luckily for us... Hold on. Since we have our nice stabbing combo, we can actually outspeed her with the, with the butcher's knife. If she's too far away... Sometimes it is better to just not go for it. You can let her have the corner. The main dilemma with... Where is she? There she is. The main dilemma with this boss fight is if she pukes, it covers the ground. And you will take a lot of damage in general based on ground coverage. Getting knocked down is okay. Just do keep in mind, you do want to be careful with the puke. Wait for it to go away sometimes. So you're gonna see how it's working. It's a very smooth fight for the most part. Um, if you drop low, immediately heal. Another thing to do as well is if you do manage to mess up and you are standing in puke. It's a metaphor for pregnancy, but not really. It's weird. It's funny. This is... A standard American hospital in England. That's fine. Alright, we're good. It's okay to check your health mid-fight. If you're limping, immediately heal. That's fine. I can heal. There 
go. It's nice. Come on. You do want to be careful behind her. Normally, whenever you hit her, you want to face her. Not the end of the world if you don't. Just food, keep food for thought. Keep that in mind. It's a lot easier to hit her if you're facing. As you going crazy. You can kind of see the issue. Alright, not the end of the world. That's fine. Good. Also, to explain something I haven't really talked about yet. Alright, good fight. Really good fight. The reason why you want Brown to stay is because Brown can actually interfere with the fight. Uh, Brown can make the pattern really messed up if you're not careful. Um, also, I don't need to heal. I have plenty of health resources, and that's why that fight's not that bad. You may have noticed, by the way, like Hoffman, I was teetering on death. The mermaid? Really easy. I had a great time with the mermaid. No issues whatsoever. And that's kind of the general difference there. <laughs> The initial vomit puddle will do damage, which is why I'm kind of staying out of the range. Keep in mind, Brown can get in the way of your attacks. So you have to be very careful. Brown's not good during that fight. He's really good for Hoffman because Brown can stun Hoffman. Yeah, it's about 30, give or take. Like, 30-ish. Oh, uh, and doing the mermaid fight with the cleaver, it's about 30 hits total. So, you're going to get anywhere from one to three stabs per um, drop. So it's going to be a lot of drops. I'm going to see here. There you go. So that's the main thing to consider for that. Anyway, it's a really easy mermaid fight. And that's why I, like, all the time I play this game. Well, I guess, you know, the couple times I've played it recently. Uh, people will tell, people will come in. They'll go like, hey, I remember how hard the mermaid was. The mermaid was so hard. I'm like, really? No, it's easy. You just got to get used to it. And you can see the speedrunning strat I did saves you a lot of time. It's quite nice. It saves a metric ton of time. And even then, I actually neared my gold. Uh, that's actually really nice. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people when they try doing combat in this game, they're going to go for the full combo because you think a combo would do more damage. It doesn't. All your hits relatively do about the same amount of damage, so realistically all you have to do is stab, stab, stab. As well, the, um, having the stun is infinitely more important than actually getting the damage. So even if the other combo does more damage, the stun's going to be worth it. Especially with common enemies, you're going to be able to carry the stun the whole time. Like you notice with some of the, like you'll see especially in this chapter, or the goat sisters I should say, uh, you'll notice that carries forward. I'm just going to be... <laughs> And then it's not even a fair fight at that point. Stray dog is... You'll see the stray dog. The stray dog is pretty uh, pretty brutal. Anyway, at this point, Bird of Happiness next. It's a very easy chapter. So what's the Bird of Happiness, you ask? What's the Bird of Happiness? So the Bird of Happiness is supposed to be more of a puzzle chapter. And the difficulty of the Bird of Happiness is that you don't know the answers. Uh, this is kind of a nice speedrun skip for us because, well, I know the answers. I wrote them down. I just know them. And you can write them down. You can look them up. In a speedrun, if you're just doing this, you don't have to do this. Hell, intentionally, if you want to go 111, 2112, 113, you can do that. You can actually brute force this. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so the thing is, you just have to answer an uh, puzzles. They're always the same. They're predetermined answers. So this is why this chapter really isn't, like, it's an easy chapter. This is the, the softball. You just beat the mermaid princess, reward yourself, treat yourself. Bird of happiness. Really easy. During this chapter, I'm mainly going to want to reiterate, when you heal, make sure that by the end of the chapter, you don't need to be topped off. Just barely have enough to where you're walking, provided you don't die. You don't want to be limping. You lose a lot of time from limping. So this whole chapter is going to be just spying on them, 
you don't need to get any of the stuff. If you're doing this casually, um, this gives you the hint you need for the chapter, but honestly, it's pretty easy. Also, a sister, I actually got marathon commentary for this game. I had one earlier, and then I messed it up. Hey, look, an item. You don't need it. Doing the game casually? Grab it. Brown will tell you where to go. Otherwise, don't need it. It's kind of a neat thing of what items you do actually need and don't actually need. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, if you're wondering, well, hey, where, where do I go? Well, you actually go back to the guest rooms. You're already there. Wait, didn't you throw out the keys? I did. Those aren't locked anymore. You unlock them. So they're no longer actually a problem. This is like the pure, most just do proper movement chapter you can have. Also, if that wasn't enough, the game gives you mad hints with all the birds drawn on the walls. Like, if you're wondering where to go, follow the birds. Just keep following them. Which is all the, all the way straight. How's it going, by the way, pants? Hope you're doing good. So if you're wondering why is this one so easy and why are, why are these chapters been much shorter, this entire section is kind of one glorified chapter. So the Mermaid Princess, the Bird of Happiness, and the Goat Sisters, it's supposed to kind of give you a reflection of the events of the game, and they're a lot shorter than, like, Sir Peter, for instance. If Sir Peter was a full-fledged chapter, this would tell me all be chapter three. Even though it's, like, four chapters. And as well, um, even if you have to take fights, now you have a stronger weapon, because you decided to go the harder one first. And that's why you end up going for Mermaid Princess. Although, I would like to actually test to see if the ice pick would be viable. Like, I feel like someday I should actually test that out if I ever grind this for a world record, like, pace. Because technically, if the ice pick's, like, negligible in the damage, it might be worth it to go get that. Because technically, you are losing a bit of time by having to go get the meat cleaver. But even still, I think it would be worth it. Like, for the most part, weapon upgrades are going to be quite nice as long as you can manage them. Also, if you don't know where to go, the game makes it incredibly obvious. Just follow the feathers now. It's quite literally a, you know, the red carpet. Except instead of... What are carpets normally made out of? Fabric? Cloth? Cotton? Wool? It's feathers. Either way, it's the metaphorical red carpet. Well, I mean, that's why it takes 30 stabs, Wondrous. Think about the damage she could do if she, you know, stabbed it right on the first try, right? Think about the damage she can do if she did it right on the first try. Really makes you think. Anyway, we go in here and then we're just gonna eavesdrop and immediately leave. Wool or cotton if they're nice, polyester vein. Well, no carpets are made out of feathers. Although I think pillows are made out of feathers, so there's that. You know what? You know Ooh, what? I'm the copy of Rulu Rose. Like We're just sort of chilling her. at the moment. No chance, not ever. She's such a pain. Just terrible. Ooh, I'm drinking my water. <laughs> I can't stand the sight of her. That's all you have to do. You just... Oh, no, not again! It fell! Well, Ruler Rose is gone, chat. Oh, Ruler Rose is doing fine. It's the knife on my desk is falling. I keep moving things. Trip $800? This is a dumber idea. I'm kind of down. Oh, well, fuck it. Just keep moving. I'll worry about that later. Anyway, my stand fell. I guess it's gone. I had it for most of the video. Now it's gone. 
I tried my best. I think I'm gonna tap my feet too much. I have the game's real shut up. I had it for most of the time. Nothing bad happened to it, it just fell on my desk. If I fell on the ground, I'd be kind of annoyed. It did not. I like an actual box would be better. I'm using like a circular container if I don't have a box. Anyway, at that point, you have the mission. She's like, oh, you have to find the bird, but hurry, hurry. The bird's back here. There you go. There's the bird. So now, what do you do to find the bird? Well, there's going to be a box on the ground. Oh, no, it's a box. Talk to it. Land. 834. All the answers are predetermined. One. Easy peasy. Hey, another box. A box within a box. This box, RE Village. I have early access to RE Village. Look at that. Well, I guess this is late access at this point. Although I did have early access to RE Village. I didn't make village content. Oh, some of you might be happy to hear that I do plan on making village content. Although I'm not going to lie. Oh god, I keep doing that on accident. I found the village. Actually, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I do plan on making village content. We'll see. It's going to be the necessary village content. This is the worst part of the game, by the way, because you might accidentally pick up one of these. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It happens. Well, kind of. There we go. It's always the same answers. We're good to go. Alright, can I fix my thing now? I didn't want to do a liquid thing because I was worried it would fall. There we go. Anyway, that's the whole chapter. Birdie happiness is very, very straightforward and easy. Well, at least you can see more of me now, I suppose. Big F for my ruler rose case. It has died. Broken to never be seen again. Ashes reduced to dust. My favorite comment was, but Ectisis, how do we know you're actually playing an actual copy of Rule of Rose now? I guess we'll truly never know. Despite the fact that I can probably just show it, if need be. Just put it right here. See? It's right here. Anyway, not bad. Can you imagine if I gold this? I don't think I am. I can't have the disc. I'm playing the disc. Anyway, the Bird of Happiness is a very easy chapter as long as you don't drop your box or rule the rose. It's a very easy, easy chapter. Well, I feel like if you're skeptical about me having the disc, people are going to be skeptical either way. I'm losing time because it. Well, that's why. It's I'd. There we go, I lost 10 seconds. Is that bad? No, it's fine. It's aight. All right, last but not least, we have the Ghost Sisters. Not the Ghost Sisters, but the Goat Sisters. This one's going to be a little bit weird. And you'll see what I mean. How do you know I'm an actual human and not an advanced VTuber? You just gotta trust me on that one, Chief. You're just gonna have to trust me. This chapter is more kind of like Sir Peter. A lot of regular fighting to do. Again, with books, what do we do? No. We don't read them. Ah, yes, clearly wondrous. As well, this room is going to have safety. We're going to be using it. I highly recommend it, especially when you get to the end game. Um, I know I said that one of the hardest sections was over Sir Peter, you know, with Hoffman. 
However, I did say there's two major choke points. Or four, actually. There's four major choke points in this game. Hoffman, the Mermaid Princess, the Rag Princess, and the Stray Dog. Technically, you can argue the final level is also a bit tough, but um, I don't think it's that bad. Anyway, grab the lollipop here. If you, you know, you need to play it safe, it's more than fine. And then once you make it to the top, there's one more lollipop. Two lollipops is good. And then we're running forward. All the way to the bottom of the jar. No! So, it's going to be kind of funny because the game kind of wants you to find a bunch of items. And then these items you're supposed to use to find a love letter. You don't need all the items. Like, watch. There's going to be, like, a book coming up. You don't actually need everything. We're also not somewhere now. You see that book? You don't need that book. No, I don't want to do all collectibles. This sounds painful. It sounds absolutely painful. I like just running the regular categories. So you can see there's a little piece of paper in the back there. I'm going to make my way to that piece of paper. This is the only one you really need to grab. Why? This has, like, the nerd's scent on it or something like that. I'm not sure entirely what it does. But this one lets Brown find the item you need. This is another one of those chapters where Brown's gonna have to find an item for you. Even though I know where it is, it doesn't matter because Brown does not know where it is. So what we're going to be doing is running into the freezer. Three hours to a three-hour run is horrible. I'm not doing it. Once inside the freezer, you want to actually equip the knife we had. Remember the knife? The meat cleaver? It's back. And then use the, uh, the stray dog list. Fine. Yep. Brown will destroy the snowman. He hates snowmen. Look what he did to that poor lad. You then actually want to grab the note here. The love letter isn't be the inciting thing, and this is going to be uh, the thing that lets you get the fight. Remember what I said when locked doors happened? You get into a fight. You can't leave unless the fight is won. So you can use the ice pick in the corner. The game won't soft lock you. However, meat cleaver is going to be a lot better. Remember what I said about infinite comboing enemies, by the way? Look at that. Really, really easy. And then we just leave. Nice and simple fight. So now, we're actually going to be heading back to where we um, would have gotten the second book. Like, you remember that kind of hallway we cut through? We're going to be going back there. Also, I want to test something because I'm stupid. I've never actually tried it, but I'm wondering if it is going to be more reliable. Normally what I like to do is I like to cut across, but I don't think I actually have to cut across. I think I just run straight down. I think. Yeah, I totally can. Neat. So we need to go back to the Sector 14 storage. What this is going to do is this is going to let me get a love letter. Or the ripped love letter, I should say. And I get to talk to these goyles. Plot-wise, this is a really sad part of the game. The nerd is writing Diana love letters, and Diana doesn't like that, and she's a bully. So she tore them in half, but she said the goat did it. So she was laughing at her, and then going like, It's okay, I bet the goat did it. And then, like, giggling behind her back, I suppose. The moral of the story is that children are mean. Children are quite mean. Anyway, we're going to talk to them. We actually end up getting the letter. Ooh, my fingers. See? We need to get the letter. 
Kids can be cruel. All right, now that I got the letter, we can leave again. You may notice. Hey, wait, aren't you just going the same way you just went? I am. I am going the same way I just went. So if you're wondering where am I going, the way to go is back to the aristocrats, which straight down here. Uh, this is where I think, like, especially when I learned this run, I got really lost. The best I can say is straight down this path. Kids could be very cruel RPG for life. They could be exceedingly cruel. Exactly. He's gonna keep running down. Make sure you talk to the girls beforehand. I think uh, part of the reason why my PB is so bad, because um, this is my current PB I'm comparing to. I knew I had PB. Um, we're definitely getting a new one, which makes this a doubly nice video. But part of the issue is the fact that it's very, very difficult to just kind of remember everything over three hours and not second guess yourself. See, there she is. Also, you only notice that some parts are blocked off. We're not going to worry about that. We're running straight back to the Aristocrats. It's not quite the Aristocrats Club, but there's a luggage room right in front of that that we've never entered. That's where it is. I'd, alternatively, if you have the love letter and you're lost, make Brown find it. You may notice there's a recurring theme to this run. What is that theme? Oh, something's lost? Make Brown find it. Also, the imps are back. How difficult to ignore them. Oh, wow, they were gone. The poor imps. Whatever will they do? As I just zoom right by. Whatever will they do? You know what they'll do? They'll get punched in the back. Actually, they won't be. Because I have places to be. So they won't get punched in the back of the head. Yeah, the imps are pretty sad, though. They just... Stay in there. Although, the upcoming fight is not easy. It's actually one of the tougher fights if you're not careful. I'm not sure you're talking about Gangnam Cho. Oh, God. And also, going back to the other one, the, uh, De Caffeine, the other items aren't red herrings. They're more just items that let you find the other items. So, if you're not sure where to go, you can use the pencil to find the book, and then use the book to find the stray dog list. And then the stray dog list is needed for the snowman. So, it just kind of steps. Uh, but we can cut out a lot of these steps we don't actually need to do, because the items innately spawn in. Anyway, at this point, it's time for Brown. Aristocrat Luggage. And now it's fight time. You know what this locked door means. So, this fight's a bit tough. They have weapons. Hey, scissors. Ooh. Be careful. Remember your combo. And remember their range. We are Clock Tower. Really easy fight, like I mentioned. You can see how busted it is. And that is a Clock Tower reference. You can see how busted it is when you just... A lot of people, they play this game, it's... Oh, I gotta do the full combo. No, just... Bop, bop, bop. And it's like, all right, you ever play a fighting game and you spam low kicks against your opponent and then they keep falling for it? Do that. That's the best way I can describe Rule of Rose. Just low kick your way to victory. It will work every time. The game is not going to be fair. Why should you? Um, as well, yeah, Mudkip, it's a good time. The only other thing I want to mention is, I guess as a speedrunning tactic or just a general tactic for this game, keep an eye out for Brown. Brown can be your friend, or he can do nothing. Uh, Brown did nothing that fight, not the end of the world, as long as you don't take too much damage. That's why I grabbed the candy. Candy's actually be good now, because I don't have to grab other candy later. But with Brown, he can actually distract people. Um, you don't need to send Brown after them. Brown will sometimes automatically bark, and if he barks, the enemies can be scared. This is really good to get, um, because it means you can wail on one guy while the other one's cowering in fear. 
And that being said, we're going to be uh, doing pretty, we're going to be sitting pretty nicely right now. We'll be sitting pretty, as they say. And then we're going to be entering the next chapter. The next chapter is going to be a breath of fresh air after what we just did. It's going to be really, really easy. Um, we're going to be getting another weapon upgrade. Um, this is going to be the second to last weapon upgrade in the game. This is going to be the second strongest weapon in the game, actually. That's new game, at least. Well, technically the third strongest weapon. But you don't use the strongest weapon in the game in the speedrun. You do, I mean, you do, but you don't. I'll explain when we get there. But this is going to be the second strongest weapon in the game we're allowed to use. Uh, the shovel is a mad power spike. Um, which is why that whole chapter really doesn't matter. Um, Telling you can keep the butcher's knife, but it's going to be worth it to get the shovel no matter what. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of fights in the, in the Rag Princess chapter. So it's going to be important that I get that. This upcoming chapter, by the way, is entirely violence-free. It's pure routing. Just know where to go. I will explain. Alright, so we're actually going to this guy's house. The weird dude who's reading his books. He's plot relevant, so he matters. You know who else matters, chat? You. Since, after all, as the, as the time right now in my time zone, as of the moment this is happening... In my time zone, it is 2 a.m. So it's the 2 a.m. vibe check. Hope you're all having a good day today. When it's 2 a.m. for me, I like to ask people the question, how are you doing today? For you, it might be a different time, but for me, it's 2 a.m. So hope all your vibes are good. And I hope you're all having a good day. Good to hear, chat. Sounds like you're doing well. Hope you're all having a good day. Anyway, we're going to leave the Rose Garden. We're just going to go immediately to the house. This is actually a really small map, too. What, ending choice? Good. You can do bad if you want to, but I'm doing good. Like, good is the main category. Soak up? Nice. Well fed? That's good. As in salvage bar. Really hot? I hear that. My room's cooled down a bit, so I like that. I have a chronic pain flare. I know that feeling all too well. I hope you'll be okay, little crow. I hope you're able to ground yourself in due time. Anyway, by going to the right, we're actually going to be able to go to the garden. And in the garden, we are going to be able to get the shovel. There we go. We now have the shovel. I don't actually know when I split the shovel. I'm going to remove that split. <laughs> I think I did it on grab. But now we have the shovel. We go back now. If you don't want the shovel, you don't have to have it. However, it is a distinct upgrade over any weapon you'll get. And there's no other place to get a shovel. Like, you're going to need it. It's going to be very important. We're carrying this through for a lot of fights. Like, the Butcher's Knight, I've been debating on if we actually need the Butcher's Knife. Like, I kind of think maybe if the um, the Mermaid Princess wasn't too bad, it wouldn't be bad. By the way, it's going to be this last door in the back. And just all the way to the back, you're going into the basement. Like, that's kind of what I was thinking for the mermaid. Tendly, if the ice pick did more damage. Um, because it is a long stairwalk that you have to do. In theory, you can beeline straight to the fight, and if you wasn't avert, you'd be able to get a nice time. But yes. Also, this is probably the chapter of a lot of stuff. Also, that gun there is foreshadowing. You notice he's pointing a gun to his head. Keep that in mind, what this guy looks like. It's foreshadowing. If you miss that, by the way, you might not be able to get the good ending. I mean, you can, and it's not like a guarantee. Like, it's not a thing, oh, you have to see it. It's more just you're going to know. Also, this bear is important. Talk to this bear three times. You're locked in the room. The way to get out is this bear is very important. Get the bear. All right, chat. I hope you're ready for my favorite part of the run. You excited? This will be the most entertaining part of a Rule of Rose speedrun. The absolutely most entertaining part. I lax.
The do she unlocks the door for you. Let's check Twitter. There we go. What's up? Not much. I'll be doing good. There we go. And that is the clean shit right there. Anyway, that's the basement. And now, we just go upstairs. So, if you're wondering, oh, why are you just waiting? What's the whole thing here? Why is that weird? Well, this is supposed to represent what happened before you got to the orphanage as a character. So, this flashback sequence is just kind of to give you backstory. So, as an actual section, it's really not that crazy. How's it going, Rosalind? Hope you're doing good. Rosalind? You're just going to be going into this room. Talk to her. And then we immediately leave. See? Very easy stuff. And then we go back to the garden. And that's the whole chapter. I know there really wasn't much to go over this chapter, because it's quite literally move, but you can kind of see how easy it is. Um, I don't think you can pee, but if you need to, like, stand up and touch your toes, you can totally do it during this chapter. Uh, there's really not a lot going on. It's probably the most laxing chapter in the whole game. Like, you straight up have a section, you don't have to do a thing. <laughs> You pee during any chapter? I mean, technically, but you can't pee efficiently during any chapter. Pissing yourself's not the same as being efficient. That's what separates us from animals. Anyway, once you're back to the garden, the chapter will be done. And there you go. Very nice stuff. Which, I know you're thinking, oh, hey, what, what, why does this even matter? Consider this chapter the calm before the storm. You begin to love this chapter in a sense because the rag princess is such a pain. Like, just do believe me when I say the next chapter is going to be one of the toughest chapters in existence. What's this game about? No, it's not about you. It's about, it's like Lord of the Flies, but instead of little boys, it's little girls. Twenty-one seconds. You have to make your, you have to make your way there. You have the title, but you don't rule. Also, I don't know if you're an orphan. Also, you need to be British. British. <gasps> not you. That is the downside. Anyway, the Rag Princess. This is Amanda's chapter, and God, it is a pain. There's a lot to do here. Keep that in mind. I'm going to break down everything you need to do. First things first, go to Amanda. The chapter is convoluted. It's messy. This is actually where most people stop playing the game casually. When I stopped playing this game for the first time, I stopped here. Whenever I watch you play this game casually, they stop here. I would argue this is harder than the Mermaid Princess by any day of the week. Um, it is confusing. It's tough. It's mean. Um, I think it's on par with Hoffman, personally. Casually, it's worse than Hoffman, but, like, just as a section, it's about on par. So, we're gonna go talk to Amanda first. If you're wondering what the hint for this is, they told you to. They, I mean, they bullied you into it, but they said you should go hang out with Amanda where you belong. This is the indication you need to talk to Amanda. So keep that in mind. So if you're wondering, why is this section so tough? It's mainly the amount of things you need to do to cause triggers to spawn. And there's a lot of fights. 
You may have noticed we picked up the shovel. There's a very good reason for the shovel grab. Also, we learn about the Rag Princess. We have a book. Like with all books, we're going to throw it away. We don't need this book. This gives us no knowledge. We throw it into the fire. It'll provide us warmth for another week. We're going to talk to Amanda, and by talk to Amanda, all that's going to happen is this. She's going to growl at us. If someone growls at you, I don't recommend approaching them. It's usually a bad idea. Anyway, after getting our growl, we're going to leave. <laughs> you get growled at. That's it. <laughs> and then you leave. Why do you want the growl? After getting the growl, Amanda will give you conversation. She'll tell you, hey, go talk to Wendy. She's in the bed. She's sick. She did it. The whole mission right now is you're looking for Joshua the bear. It's that bear he found in the last one. Do not approach the growling animal. We're going to make our way back up to Wendy. If you're wondering, where is the sick room? It's actually been on the top floor the entire time. If you look around, you'll eventually find it. Like, it's part of the whole, um, you know, the process, the building. But it is right here. Uh, second door right here. What we need to do is we need to get her back into bed. And then she'll say, wait a minute, I didn't do anything. It was Amanda. And then that, that's it. See, she's passed out. It's like me on a Saturday night. Just <laughs> decimate it, man. <laughs> decimate. <laughs> you know what's up. All right, now we leave. See, it all works out. Kind of, sort of, not really, maybe. Okay, here's the annoying thing. The really annoying thing. We're going back to Amanda's shack. If there's one thing that you do not do, you will waste minutes of your time. It's really necessary you do this exactly right. So back to the shack we go. One, we're going to talk to Diana. She's the tall princess. I think her name's the brave princess. Either way, she's the only girl in the room. We're gonna talk to Diana. That's, you may have noticed I said not Amanda, but Diana. That is correct. We're talking to Diana. We're on an airship. See? Now that you've talked to Diana, you're going to be talking to the treasure chest on the right. This is very important. It's a sewing kit realistically, but it drops a bear tail. Grab it. No, not that. It's a bit of an awkward spot. There we go. Why do you need to talk to this? The cutscenes of Spawn and Amanda don't show up unless you do both those things. So, even though I know where to go and I know what to do, if you didn't grab the bear tail and you didn't grab that whole section there, it won't actually spawn in. Which is probably one of my least favorite things to ever happen. It gets really, really bad. Yeah, this is supposed to be like, a, I guess a Zeppelin or something, or an airship. It's supposed to be kind of like the, the Hindenburg or something. The children are mean. Let's just go with that. The children are very, very mean. If you did it right, you'll see a cutscene of Amanda dragging a dead body. By the way, that looks like your dead body. Deepest lore. 
It is easy to forget. That's why it sucks. Anyway, at that point, if you got that cutscene, you're good to go. Go to the elevator. Uh, Amanda wants you to meet you at the top of the elevator. However, there's going to be a bit of a monkey wrench. You want to go to the elevator to the point where it goes up. After it goes up, immediately start walking back to the door. There's a power outage. Alright. So, what do you do? How do you fix this? Casually, a lot of people get stuck here. This is hard. So the hint is, if you talk to the boys, you learn that one of them wanted a new staff. So to fix the generator, you're, you find the room earlier in the game if you looked around. Um, I, alternatively, if you didn't look around, there's a half biscuit. Because you want to follow the fat kid. Because the fat kid is fat and has left behind food. So if you follow his half biscuit, you can find him. That's your hint. There's no other hint on what to do. Luckily for me, I don't need to worry about this. The items aren't spawning by Brown. It's that guy right there. You talk to him, he's like, hey, my friend disappeared. And then you could take his biscuit, and then you find him. So there's two parts of the generator mission. A start and an end. I know that sounds stupid, but just hear me out on this. <laughs> a beginning and an end. That's what's that's what it's about. So what's actually going to happen, though, is we're going to be getting into a fight. And when I say about the shovel... Uh, every character in the game has their own kind of animal. Um, we're about to hit the worst in the game. Also, let's just drop our inventory so we have things again. Do not drop your food. There we go. So we have the shovel. And now we have the pig. Oh boy, the pig. So, if you've never played this game, the pig is the meanest enemy in the game of casual enemies. Um, the reason why is because all their attacks have knockback. They're actually really easy to fight as long as you can be in range. Um, but their attack is like um, a literal T pose. Oh well, yeah, it's a rare horror game that a lot of people get to see. So, avoiding the pigs in the hallways is going to be a massive pain in the ass. Because they are really large. And they run in that T-pose. If you get hit by any part of the T-pose, you get knocked down. So you're wondering where the generator room is. It's actually right next to the smoking room. Remember old friend the smoking room? It's going to come in handy once again. It's going to be the first door right before that door we kind of been skipping the whole time. A violin. OST in this game is a classic. It's very good. What we want to do in this room is you notice the fat kid is breaking that. What is Rose's rule? I guess gardens in particular. We don't open this door. He's just gonna run away. That is fine. That be red? Yes. And now we've started the generator mission. Uh, he is hid somewhere on the airship. You need to find him. Uh, I couldn't find him at all when I played this game casually. I had to like look around for hours, and eventually I found him on my second attempt of this. Uh, it took me forever. I accidentally found it. Um, the hint is the biscuits. So if you're trying to do this game normally, you want to use the actual thing, have Brown find the biscuits. Otherwise, go through the smoking room. If you try going through the kitchen, it's going to be locked. You can't get through. At least to this side. Keep that in mind as I say that. Uh, now we're going to be going this way. This is brand new territory. We haven't really been here outside of the one time that we're here, like, kind of passing. Also, remember the pigs and how I mentioned how hard it is to pass them? Hope you're doing good, sweet. Yep, there it is. So that first door after the second pig here is going to be where I want to be. Oh, get off me, sir. Get off me. Their models are big. Got the jab. Hey, nice. Very nice. Once you're in the store, again, be careful of the pig. A safety strat, which you can do, 
I'll show you. You can slap a pig, and then he'll stop. Go right. And then up. Obviously, it's going to be faster not to slap the pigs, but you can. It's going to be on the left side here. It's going to be in the pantry. If you have a map and you have it up, pantry. Um, it's locked from the other side, and there is no other side, so. Here it is. How's it going, Victor Ghost? We have the lever. Notice, the fat kid went to the pantry. That's your, that's your puzzle answer. And that's how you fix the generator. That's part one of why this is difficult. Pigs. On the upside, the way back is much easier. Because instead of going through, like, six pigs, it's, like, less. Although, that can still happen. Brown is your friend if he does that. Alright, what you want to do now is instead of backtracking, you just want to go straight left. Now, why do you want to go straight left? I mentioned the kitchen was locked. From the original side we went through. However... If you go through the other end, it's actually not locked, because you're in the room with the people who locked it. So now, you don't need to worry, and these pigs are much easier to dodge, as you can see. And now it won't be locked. So it's much faster on the way back, and you'll instantly be back next to the generator. Oh, get off me, please. And there we go. I'm going to take a moment to also top off my health. This um, section has a lot of combat coming up. So let's actually... Oh, I actually don't need to. I have a lot better than I thought. There we go. And the generator is now fixed. Power's back on. So that's phase one of why this sucks. Pigs. A lot of pigs. I love pigs. I hate these pigs. These are asshole pigs. You know what kind of pigs they are? Asshole pigs. That is the type. But now, power's back on. We're good to go. And we can head back. The way back's also really easy. Just straight up back the way you came. Also, the imps shouldn't be here on the way back. If I remember correctly, they all despawn once you do this. So, that's part one of why this section kind of sucks. Now, I know you're thinking, hey, that wasn't so bad. It was just like, you know, you only got knocked down like five times. How is that bad? Not bad at all. Barely any damage. Kind of. The other issue is... You might notice on my splits that after the meeting with Piggy... It says fight. Um, we're going to have a lot of mandatory fights coming up. And the fights are probably some of the most unfair fights in the game. Mainly because of the numbers advantage. Meaning, while Hoffman and Mermaid Princess are tough in their own right, it's going to be a bit unfair to fight five things at once that can all have their own separate attacks. And if you've learned anything about this game, they can quite literally off the ground you. Like... Or I guess the moment you get up, you can get stunned again. So, when you get into these later fights, you really have to be careful of, like, what are you going to do? I don't think you quite understand how this game works. So, food for thought on that one. I'll kind of explain the normal strat for each fight that I use, but... Just kind of keep this in mind coming up. Uh, if you were to save it, I recommend saving it before you go to the elevator coming up. It's very important to have a save for this section, I think. Uh, this is why this is one of the four sections I mentioned will probably be resetters. It's funny, too, because the end game has a lot of forced fights, but those are really easy for separate reasons. Like, while the, en while the end game enemies might be tougher, they're actually not harder because if you fight one tough enemy, that's easier than fighting five slightly less tough enemies. Anyway, once you're at the elevator, finally, just mash X. You're going to the upper floor. You're essentially meeting back up with Amanda in her meeting spot, which is on top of the airship. She tries her best. That's all that matters. Mm 
All right, there we go. Also, I really hope that, um, I guess not just chat, but anyone who watches this in the future, I hope that you guys do enjoy that I'm trying to also tell you that the way you would, um, normally do this is with certain items. Um, because while well, I know where to go, I, I know this from playing the game, I know this from doing the find, so if you're watching this and doing this game casually, I kind of want you to be un the understanding of how you would get to these areas. Um, speaking of which, up next, you would find both this spot and the upcoming spot by using Joshua the bear. He picked up that tail earlier, so it's nice. Kind of ludic. Um, I will say, also hold on, white chocolate. White chocolate's really powerful. Is, uh, I think it's like a, one of the healing items. And it's really good. It's really efficient. I'm glad you enjoy it, little crow. I'm glad you enjoy it. And this game as a pickup is weird. It's a beautiful game. It's an artsy game. But I don't think it's worth $700 if you're just looking to play a, like a game. It's not bad. I mean, I like it, but also I kind of like clunky games. But the main issue of this game is I think they might be re-releasing it soon. So anyway, we'll see, coming up. Rising first, we're gonna chase. Seven what? Seven hundred dollars, this is an expensive game. You wanna follow the boy. And you may notice I typed little instructions on my splits. This helps me quite a lot. I actually recommend doing this in many splits. He stole the doll. The way you would find him alternatively, use Joshua the, bear, uh, the bear's tail. Uh, in doing so, you'll be able to know where, they, uh, where he went. He always goes in the same direction, luckily, so this would be nice. Now, it's time to fight. They're going to re-release this game at some point, most likely. Uh, they talked about the interest of it. There was a poll. Either this or Chula will be getting released. If this gets re-released, it'll be exciting to see a new influx of speedrunners. Anyway, multiple enemy fighting. This is why this sucks. I focus the right one first. Remember? Infinite combo. And then get to the one, like, afterward that's more... You know... If the other one's out of the way, let him be. Do not do the hard combo. Onion games, correct. After this, end towards the left side. You want to go to the left. I know he ran to the right. Go to the left. The first fight's not that hard. And those three dudes, that's not hard at all, Dices. That's really easy. No, trust me. It gets worse. Um, you get five, and then you get a piggy. And it's like seven in the last one. Um, at this point, you want to run all the way down until you get to a loading screen. Can you hit Brown on, like, Huey on accident? Actually, I don't think you can, ideally. Um, Brown's pretty good at not being hit. However, he can kind of ruin you hitting other things, if that makes sense. Like, Brown can't die, luckily, and he's not amazing at fighting, so it's not too bad. But he can kind of interfere from you hitting things. So that's Brown's major malfunction. Anyway, now that we're in Central Stairway C, once we have our first turn, we're gonna make it. And then we'll be hitting our next fight. Uh, the next fight's gonna up the ante. Uh, instead of just being regular dudes, they are all going to have weapons. Alright. Again, I usually go for the right one first, especially if it has, like, a fork or a broom. Taylor Midgard, thank you very much for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Really good there, by the way. We have four here. Alright, go towards the left side of the fight. Work that time. There you go. Hope you had a good stream, Taylor Midgard. Yeah, no problem, Ludic. If you're gonna go down, make a right. Once you at the end of it. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome, I'm McDice. I love horror games and horror game speedruns. I'm a big fan of the genre. Thank you, Hapus. So, one thing I do want to mention. Doing the full combo is good in one case. If... Hold on. Oh, wrong way. All the way down. I keep forgetting. All the way down. If you're in a cluster of enemies and you're surrounded, do a full combo. You'll hit all of them at once and that, that's worth it. Hope you had a good stream, though. I'm not sure if I have a mod around, but you can get a shout out that way. Otherwise, hope you had a good stream regardless. Alright, once you load back in, make the first right and then a left.
How so, Avalon? I'm confused. How so? You'll know you're going the right way if at the end of all this you end up seeing the boy. Oh, how's it going, Juanito? I'm doing good. Doing a nice marathon commentary for this one. It's going quite well. Almost there. Be right back. Enjoy the beer right back. Thank you again for the raid as well. And there we are. Okay, so you may notice last one, there's a pig. I like to go after this guy first. I essentially want to be out of the way of the pig. The faster you kill the pig, the better. Or if the pig just stays out of the fight, you're also good. Pick one. All right, really good fight. This is actually an amazing section. Go straight at the finale. Also, Rosalind, thank you very much for the tier one. Enjoy the scissors and the emotes, and welcome to the swarm. Thank you. I hope you're having a good day today. Here's amazing. Nice. Oh, that sounds rough. I hope you enjoyed Nier. Because you are playing whack-a-mole. But with, you know, I guess, pig children. Anyway, at this point, go to the lower floor, and good job you made it this far. Uh, you're going to be safe for quite a while. This has been very good if you made it this far. Oh, God, my eye. I was really focused in that section. So my eyes tearing up a wee bit. Now, how do you get back? If you remember during the Goat Sisters, you can get back this way. This is the same lift during the Goat Sisters that we passed. So, yeah. It is totally evil. Well, yeah, that's because I kicked ass. You might also be wondering, where is Joshua the Bear? He's going to be back at the spawn, or the Aristocrat Club. So all you have to do is make your way back to the Aristocrats, and then you are done. And it's good to go. So overall, like, I did make that look a little bit easy. The usual problem you'll run into during that portion is crowding so the pig especially once you get to that section and all the dudes uh, you can get five on one in the corner and god it is rough to get out of that um some of them will grab you and then they can hit you while you're grabbed and then you just get comboed by all of them and you can lose a lot of health luckily for me i actually get to save a lot of time thanks to not losing health and that's going to be helpful Parasite is a lot of fun, and I recommend beating the game first, but if you want to learn the route, on speedrun.com, there's a very, very easy route. Uh, you just read the notes, follow along, really easy to play it that way. And it's quite nice, too. You know, I have eye drops on my desk, and I should do those after this run. That would be smart. I have them. I'm pretty bad at putting things in my eyes, though. Oh, well. So, the next section's gonna be a bit confusing. The best I can say is just try to follow along. Once we kind of, you know, go to the aristocrats. I don't think the next section's hard, it's just... confusing. Parasite is easy even without New Game Plus. I almost never do New Game Plus. The only times I do New Game Plus if it's distinctly better than New Game. Parasite even on New Game is really easy. Because you get all the supplies that, you know, you're supposed to get. And then you can also get extras if you really need it. You can play a lot safer. Even on New Game, it's not hard. I don't think anyone runs New Game Plus or Parasite Eve. Like, I don't know any New Game Plus runners outside of Chrysler Building. But even then, people still do New Game every now and again. Alright, with that, we have beaten the Rag Princess. An incredibly tough section. And we're almost done. Oh. At this point, you know what to do. Make your offering. Joshua the Bear. And then if you're wondering how do you get back to the club, how do you know the bear's here, use the bear's tail. Bear's idea was a good game. And then the funeral's gonna be a weird chapter. 
two parts. Part one's mildly annoying. Part two is fun. It's really fun for part two. Um, part two as well is going to be a bit of a thing where um, there's going to be some interesting routing. And I actually, this is the one thing I added to the speedrun. A lot of these games very often, you know, speedrunning as a hobby is kind of building upon the backs of giants. Uh, every, every now and again, you get to contribute. And I got to for Rule of Rose. And after this, tell Brown to come three times. Don't tell him, go, tell him to come. This is Circle, three times. He'll eventually help you. Come. There you go. All right. So what we're going to be doing, we don't care about that crayon. We don't need it. We are going to be going downstairs. Hey, remember the orphanage? So you might remember this room from the very beginning of the game. I said earlier we'll eventually be learning the layout of the land here, because we do need to play in the orphanage. Um, so keep in mind as I just sort of say some of the stuff coming up. You're just going to be leaving the room. You don't need the red crown. Uh, have the way you want to go in my splits and the ideal route for the reason you do this. But we will see. The problem with this section is, casually, there's no hints. There's no way to know what you're doing. Um, at least to my knowledge. It's kind of just assumed that you look around and talk to people and eventually it works. Um, the whole goal, realistically, is you want to talk to everyone. I didn't know that, I just kept talking to people and eventually it worked. Uh, I don't know if the Scarecrow gives hints here, he might, but all I can say is talk to everybody. Except the mage, she doesn't matter. It's a bit sad, but... Everybody but the maid matters. I don't know why. And I'll kind of also enjoy the best song in the game. It's going to get stuck in your head. It's a real earwig. We're going to start by talking to the headmaster. The creepy dude, Hoffman. You might remember him as the BDSM fight. We're going to talk to him. Luckily, people are always in the same spot. Just mash the dialogue if you can. Sometimes it's scripted. It's fine. You dirty wretch. Same. Why are you always trying to get out of work? Can't you do your job like all the other children? No. All right. At that point, you leave. Go back the way you came. I think I forgot a split. That's fine. All right, so hallway. Now you may have noticed there's a couple of boy, uh, a couple of boys. They're sword fighting, except you know it's an innocent sword fight. It's not the, it's not that type of sword fighting. It's rooms. Talk to both of them. It doesn't matter which one you talk to first. You need to talk to both of them. By the way, all they're gonna do is just look at you sad. Like, they don't actually talk to you. They just sort of stare at you or not stare at you, and then. That's all they do. The important thing, though, is you get notes thrown at you. <laughs> These notes getting thrown at you are really important. You need all the notes thrown at you. All of them. Up next, I go through this hallway because this is going to lead me straight to the kitchen. If I go all the way down. The kitchen is right in this room. The kitchen's going to be our next stop. Uh, I've kind of found a nice route for this one. I believe this is also the route the world of record uses. Um, so this one's nice. Although I do change the route up on the night shift. There's a day shift and a night shift here. You're talking to every child. The important thing, though, is the thing that measures progress isn't the discussions with children. It's the notes. So whenever you get a note thrown at you, read it. You have to read it. It's imperative, by the way, this book. Next, we're going to be making our way to the second floor. If you took a lot of damage during the last section, what you want to do is heal here. 
Uh, there's a, uh, you don't need to heal here, but stock up here. There's a lollipop and I think a pie. So, a lot of resources in this room. It's gonna be like right there on that green and then on the shelf. The other one I don't remember what that is, but if you did take damage, you can stock up here. That's okay. If you're doing fine, don't worry about it. You just leave. We should get a note thrown at us here. All right, if I remember correctly, the direction we want to go is right. It gets kind of confusing with the layout, but you want to make your way to the library. Yeah. I mean, he's doing his best. He's doing his best, Rail Tracer. You get another note in the library. You know you've done this right, but on the last note, it'll say, Come to the main hall. I am a bit worried because of one of the notes I don't think spawn that might spawn later. I think I'll be fine, but we will see. At the very least, it's very minor time save, but it happens, not the end of the world. It's a bop, ain't it? And then you leave. That sounds pretty good, not gonna lie. And then, hey, look at that. We have a note. And there we go. So, why do we start in the library, you ask? Well, the library also has the next, like, two on the way. If you go to the left, you're not going to be able to find it nearly as much. No, I'm not prepping for a stray dog cosplay. I said, hope I'm not. That'd be disgusting. See? There we go. And we can leave. You may have signed to the primary children, I suppose. And then the headmaster. Uh -huh. Very nice, Avalon. One note here. Also, there's the Joker one. It says, you get what you deserve. It's like the movie Joker. Except, not. Anyway, the last one is going to be... Actually, not here. This is the dormitory. Um, but this is going to lead us to the last one. We run all the way down here. Oh, God, please. Thank you. <sighs> and then we go to the door. Although, I think that there is a note that gets thrown at us here. Yep, there it is. Pop. <laughs> you have to wonder who's throwing the paper at her. Exit through this door here. So the reason why we route it this way is because there's one person who's all of up. And while you could go left first to go get her, it makes more sense because you do get dropped off here anyway. You can just go here. Hey, I'm glad you think it's comfy. It's a nice time. So for this hallway, you just go all the way down to the end and then you make your way back to where you came. It's weird which ones give you the notes and which ones don't give you the notes. I'm not sure why it's this way, it just sort of is. I think the representation is supposed to be like all the children you dealt with. Like, you barely dealt with the mermaid and you barely dealt with the maid, so... You end up being all good? Right, Iris? What a cute game. I sure hope nothing bad happens. There we go. This one should say, come to the main hall. Yep, come to the hall. So now we can go back the way we came. So... Why did we have to do all that? Because the end trigger for this section is a note in the main hallway. Also, you need this to happen to you as well, or else you won't get the note. That took up half my health. It's really mean in the uh, the end game. It's really mean. Last but not least, right here. 
Time stamps are wrong? I don't do that part, actually, weirdly enough. I just... I run the show. I think YouTube's all done by the GDQ people. There we go. Yep. You have to fall down the stairs, or else you don't get that final note. All right. So, we have to do that again, but now I have to do fights. The stairs are blocked, and a lot of the entrances are going to be blocked. It's time for the imps. If you're wondering why they all want to kill you, the aristocrat club put a bounty in your head. So it's time to die. Well, not really, because I know what to do. There's an order to this that's been debated on many times. And here's the thing. The old route, how do you get an axe during the last the daytime section? That takes time and we don't need to get the axe. Because while the axe is a better weapon and we will be using it, there's more than one axe to get. I actually ended up discovering this casually. Uh, what you want to do actually is you immediately want to go back to the main uh, stairway. The order of the fights is very important now. As well, I believe you can just run past us. We should be good to go. I don't think I have to talk to it. I hope I don't, at least. Yep, there we go. You now know that we have to save Wendy. We are making good time. Ignore my splits. I messed them up. <laughs> We're going to the second floor. As well, before I do that, what we're going to be doing... I'm going to be taking a lollipop, and I eat it. And then I equip the shovel. We're actually going to go left. So, going right, um, we're going to make our way back there, don't you worry. But going left is going to be quite nice for us. I think. I hope. It should, it should be nice for us. Missed the song already? It is a good song. We're gonna end up back up here on the second floor between the two hallways. I think both ways are about equal. Oh, this one has a lot more loading screens. I haven't officially timed the two, but the main idea is you want to end up in the bedroom. And the main reason why I want to be here is because this door is going to put me closer towards the enemy I want to be next to. The dorm The dormitory. In this room is a mouse. You need to kill six animals. Two mice, two goats, two pigs. To unlock the door, you need to kill the one mouse. This room also spawns rabbits. This mouse must die. Alright, get an axe. You can see he dropped an axe. Come on. Clean, very clean. Phase two still needs to happen. There we go. And then we exit this way. After equipping the axe. Alright, good stuff. So that is how you save time. You do one fight with the shovel, and ultimately you don't lose that much time because it takes more time to get the axe than it does to improve that fight. Next, why is it good to start there? So the reason why we start on the dormitory is because on the way back now, we have to go to the dormitory anyway. We end on the first floor because you can't actually fight the first floor people until you get the cutscene with Wendy. And you end up on the first floor anyway, so the second floor is just a detour. So it makes more sense that we go to the second floor first and then do the first floor, instead of doing the first floor first. Good fight. See? We got the pig, and... We are outskis. Every section is going to be really, really nice. Next, the library. This is why it's very good to remember the animals that go with each person. Also, I wrote them down. 
So you remember the route we took? The library is right here. Remember? Library Sewing Dorm. This time, Dorm Sewing Library. You don't actually even need the bird. Technically, you can go right or left. I just, I think going left might be safer because you'll have more time just to fight the mouse. If you go to the right, you spawn on the bottom side of the dormitory, which isn't necessarily bad, it's just you have to be careful. By the way, same thing here. You don't need to kill both imps. You only need to kill the goat. There we go. Only the goat must die. This is probably one of the major time saves for this whole section as well. Given that, you know, if you're doing this, you might be expecting, hey, wait a minute, shouldn't I kill both of them? No, you only need to kill the main animal. And now we can actually make our way back downstairs. So the question that might come up that you might be wondering is, hey, why don't I just do the first floor first? I have to go to the kitchen and main hall anyway. I was already there. Why don't I do that again? The animals don't spawn in until you talk to Wendy. So, the kitchen will be fine if you want to do that first, but you have to head back downstairs anyway, because you had to go upstairs. So it makes sense to do the upstairs fight, and then here we go. We can just go right here. Zombie, the tier one for 22 months. Enjoy the emotes and the scissors, and hope you're having a good day today. Also, be doing well, John Sku. The goat girl is supposed to be the dork. The nerd. Because every character had an animal representation. Damn. Well, I hope you had a good time. You still don't get this game? Well, it's artsy. Again, I said it's Lord of the Flies, but little girls. That wasn't long ago. Alright, same deal. Just kill the person. It's another mouse. The mouse went through me. Wow. What a god, he went through me. Although Brown actually put in a lot of work right there. What's Lord of the Flies? It's a book. I kind of assumed everyone knew what Lord of the Flies was. Hey, happy birthday, Longo. Hope you're having a good one. Hope you have a nice birthday. A big birthday to you. I'll be using some fun. Thank you, Katrina. And it's required reading anymore, really? Come here. So I actually thought recently... Also, yes, check. We get Phil's birthday man for long ago. I, ha I actually thought for a while, as in Raven Spirit, that what if you went to the main hall immediately after leaving the main hall? And this is where I figured out that the animals don't actually spawn in until you talk to... Until you pass Wendy. Um, I tried doing that earlier, and it keeps the same initial spawn. The spawn won't change until you know you have to kill a pig. And a goat and a mouse. So it's kind of mean, and this is actually really awful, that you don't often know, um, you, ha you can go back to the main foyer and it's gonna have things. There probably is. But yeah, essentially it's children making hierarchies and being terrible to each other. And then, this one is the hardest fight of these ones, just because there are two now, instead of one. As per usual, get one surrounded, attack whoever is more isolated. Ideally, you want the pig dead first. Oh, hold on. Again, if you're limping, immediately heal. Brown, you're a god! A god, Brown, an absolute Chad. I'm proud of you, my friend. And that's why Brown is very helpful. Sleep incoming? Hey, sleep is important. Get your sleep. Yeah, Brown did really good there. Brown was a good lad. Alright, there we go. He did good. Now, oh. wait, it was still required, wait, no, it was still required reading in, like, the 2000s, and, like, the 2010s. 
It didn't get pulled. It still required reading in many places. Yeah, like... I don't think that's so much the case. Plenty of people still read Lord of the Flies. I know this because I had friends who did it. I didn't read it. I know it. It's not required in most areas. A lot of areas still require it. A lot still require it. It's on the teacher? Oh yeah, they usually have a whole decision of things they can make. I didn't read it, but I had friends who read it. Why did I read it said Lord of the Flies? I think I read something stupid. I read Animal Farm. Animal Farm sucked. Although I liked Animal Farm. It still sucked. Yeah, I had friends when I was in high school who read uh, Lord of the Flies. And I gotta read Animal Farm. It really depends on the curriculum. Anyway, at this point, if you made it this far, I'm very proud of you. You're almost done with all of Rula Rose. This chapter ends the funeral once you make it to the top. Although, this is going to be the major twist of the game. I hope you're ready for it. Brown is gone. He's dead. Where is he? Can Brown really be dead? Also, if you're wondering where to go, well, you're pretty much reversing the beginning of the game. Remember, you came down here with a shovel. You're going back all the way to the top. Don't talk to anyone on the way. They're all dummies. They're not actually brown. They're all just fake browns. The real brown's all the way at the top. Animal Farm wasn't bad, but I do think it's stupid, but also I understand it's a metaphor. Exactly. Nothing bad happens to Brown during the events of this game, I'll say that much. Anyway, with that being said, you get a cutscene. And then the cutscene's actually really powerful and moving. I recommend watching my all-cutscenes video on YouTube. I'm advertising my own videos! Um, but the reason why is because um, you will kind of learn what happens to Brown. And what happened. Or what happened to Brown. Yay, I saved six seconds. Alright, at this point, we're on the final boss. The stray dog. There's a lot of health you can grab. Shameless promotion? It's my content! <laughs> Anything me existing in this corner's promotion. Anyway, what you want to do... Once you enter this room, actually go towards the bookshelf. This is a bit of a safety strap, but there's a lollipop here. Take it. What you're going to do is you're going to go immediately down on the first floor. At this point, you probably know where it is. In fact, just go through the only doors you can. You'll find it. And ignore the children. They now respect you, so they bow down to you. Ignore them. Oh, really? You do not care really? for them. How <laughs> Ignore them. You can talk to them if you want and you get more dialogue. You can ignore them. They'll just run away. Also, the one crying, you can ignore her too. Especially her. She said we deserve to be gobbled. I don't deserve to be gobbled up. Actually, I think it depends on what they mean by gobbled up. Either way, I can't think of any good things with it. I don't think gobble, I think of turkeys. Like me on Thanksgiving. Eating. Anyway, it's pretty easy to get to the right spot at this point. You're going to follow the children. They lead the way pretty handily. Do not talk to this one. You'll know to talk to children once you enter the classroom. Also, there's going to be a lollipop in the classroom. Pick it up. It's very important you pick it up. So, context-wise, what's happening in the game? You've taken over the rule of the rose. You're the king now, or the queen now. They all bow down to you. You also get a lollipop. That's your reward. Sorry we killed your dog. Here's candy. You know, I guess that's 
successful payoff. Talking to these people is going to spawn in the final boss. The final boss is going to have two phases. Well, three technically, but two major phases. The phases are going to be a little bit awkward. Greetings, princess. Please it's also a very tough fight if you're unaware of what to do. Greetings, princess. It's really Jennifer. easy if you know the patterns. I've Thank died here earlier today because I'm stupid, though. So maybe I don't even know it. Club. Greetings, princess Jennifer. From now on, you'll be our new princess. I guess princess is the appropriate term here. Now, princess, please think up a new game. Please lead us. We See? Are yours to command, They're just playing games called Kill Your Dog. <laughs> Sorry, I killed your dog princess, game. Go ahead. Guide us. We need you. We don't know what to do. <laughs> Look. Look, it's hmm. windy. It's windy. That's windy. See? It's windy outside. Who would have thought? The UK is very windy this time of year. By the way, I'm going to take a moment to advertise my Twitter, because why not? Actually, I don't think it shows up. No, anyway, it doesn't show up down here. All I did was plug my own... Oh, damn it. That showed up in the bottom. I suck. Anyway, at this point, just go outside. I mean, you might not like the dog coming up. You might not like this dog. This is not just any dog. This is the stray dog. I did. Oh, but uh, I did. But gotta be careful with Nightbot. Breaks legs. But at least it's down here now. Anyway, here's the stray dog. Um, it's a grown man who uh, shat himself apparently. So how does the fight work? Get your ass kicked immediately. You need three hits on you. It's the stray dog. You need three hits. By the way, yes, you need to get hit three times. Well, thank you, Unnatural. All right, now that you've been hit three times, begin phase two of the fight. Brown comes back. You can't kill him until Brown is here. You may have noticed I didn't equip a weapon. Why? Because now I'm going to equip a weapon, and I'm going to heal. This game has a... Oh, hold on. This game has a big habit of not letting you actually do anything. My well, record gone? I don't really care. So the attack is you want to get three hits in. After that, he does this weird standing thing like that. Traditionally, it's two or three. Two is telling you the safer route, but you can get three. Oh, good fight. Wow, that was a really good fight. Last run, I literally took all the hits. This fight, really good. Really good fight. So, phase two. How's phase two work? Leave. This is where the good ending and the bad ending split occurs. The good ending has you using a gun to let him kill himself. The bad ending has you kill him. I mean, this can be a world record if I get the bad ending. If I really want to make a world record, I can. But I want this to be a good ending run, so we're doing the good ending. Bad. It is a bad ending. No, we're not doing bad ending. Bad ending sucks. Hey, people actually follow me on Twitter. The absolute mad lads. They actually did it. Absolute mad lad. They actually did it. Honestly, I think I could get rolled record and rule a rose by grinding this game more. <laughs> like, some of best ain't bad. I just need to not suck on certain sections. Either way, this has been a very good uh, Marilyn commentary VOD. Um, we saw the final boss. Well, thank you then. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. So the way this is going to work, Gregory's gun. You may have noticed earlier he was putting a bullet to his brain. You have to let him do that. It's actually really mean. Do dodge attacks. He'll beg. Wait for him to beg. It's RNG. Oh. 
sorry. Usually he will do it once the screen freezes. At this point, use the gun. When you use the gun, the fight is done and you are going to get the good ending. However, the run is not over yet. We still have one more chapter. Technically, it's called Once Upon a Time and it's a separate chapter, but I just have it, like, it's all one thing. So the thing I mentioned earlier about the strongest weapon in the game, technically, you could just, um shoot him and kill him um the gun doesn't one shot him but does a lot of damage and you only get one bullet but you're supposed to use the gun to let him kill himself it's the good ending quote unquote so the end of this game is you're just leaving the orphanage and going back to the shed uh at this point you should know how to get there ideally go out the front door you probably just went there how's it look hope you're doing good today Suicide is better. Well, the game and this... Rule of Rose isn't so much a game about... You know... Murder and suicide. The fact of the matter is... What Jennifer was seeing in the game was past events that already happened. She's trying to reconcile her memories, and that's the point of Rule of Rose. Which is why she's a child again. Exactly. It's a game about healing. Emotional healing. She's not able to emotionally heal unless she comes to terms with what actually happened. Which is the stray dog taking his own life and murdering all her friends. She has to accept everything so she can move on and, you know, preserve her memories. That is the point of the game. You wouldn't say that? I mean, you wouldn't say it. But you can't disprove it otherwise. Anyway, we're making our way back to the shed. You can't. See, the, the can does not matter. I know you can, but I know you can't. And the second one is the one that matters. Preservation of memories is probably the most important thing. Healing can be kind of a fray. I want to use healing specifically. Like, I, I get the whole point. Healing works, but it doesn't work. Preservation is more the accurate turn of phrase. Anyway, the run ends once... I think you talked to Brown. Actually, I probably should have remembered this one. The run ends on the final action, which I believe is talking to Brown. And? GG. At this point, there's nothing left to do? Wait, is this the final point? I think so, hold on. It might be. No, it's not. Last point is talking to this thing. The Bucket Knight. It's the Bucket Knight. Bucket Knight. It's Bucket Knight. I remember, I was like, there's something I gotta do, and I don't remember. Anyway, now it's GG. It still, it still counts. That's Rule of Rose. Also, I got a meaty PB. I'm top two now, so it's pretty nice. I'm actually good at this game. I PB'd by 14 minutes. I hope you all enjoyed this marathon commentary. Also, it's a very sweet ending. I do recommend that if you want to watch all the cutscenes and see a more thorough playthrough, I guess with similar commentary, I have one on YouTube. Otherwise, this kind of explains the speedrun to a nice degree. It could have been better on certain places, but you know what? Honestly, it wasn't all that bad. Um, I could have played a little bit safer too, but you know what? It worked very well. I hope you all enjoyed it. Enjoy the ending. And thank you for watching this. Also, yeah, chat, I think it went pretty well. I think it went pretty damn good. It's a sweet ending to a sweet game. But yeah, I'd say the major theme of this game is the preservation of um, memory. That's also what it builds towards. The preservation of the memory of Brown. Anyway, if you want to be in the tweet, because I'm tweeting this out, uh, I don't know. Type your favorite dog. You can't say Snoopy. That's my favorite dog. Actually, that's not my favorite dog, but he's up there. You can't say Snoopy. I just said you can't. I know what I'm doing. Do. No, I don't like that one. Yeah, pretty good stuff. I hope you all enjoyed it. 
If you would like to watch more of these marathon commentaries, uh, let me know in the comments on YouTube if you're watching there. If you're not watching on YouTube and you're just like to know more, oh, let me know here. It's absolutely fine. And I do want to say thank you for watching this. All right, now let me do that tweet. Where's my tweet? I want to be dead when I am I'm in bed. I can be so mean, you can beat me. I would like to shame you. I would like to blame you just because of my love to you. Cool. Now I've already done the one. I've already done the dog thing, chat. There we go. Up. Uh, the question is, what the fuck do I do now? Wait, what do I do now? It wasn't. I expected this to last longer. 